Hi everyone, a very good evening to one and all who are available live on the channel of MBAP now. Give me a quick thumbs up and update if you guys are able to see me, if you guys are able to hear me, and if the presentation is visible to all of you. Come on, all of you. It's going to be a good interactive session where we'll be discussing about the performance of mock test one, which all of you have recently given. We'll see the overall analysis, we'll see the question selection, the pattern, the questions that you may expect in the paper to come up. And the most important part is how to tackle those questions, those pressure, that time management in the actual time frame when you actually sit for the given mock paper or the national level CAT examination. Cool. Give me a quick thumbs up if you guys are able to hear me. Um, put it on the, in the comment box if you guys are able to see the presentation live. All of you who are live, I would need a response from all of you. Come on. Perfect, Veena and everyone. All right. Cool. I hope I'm live, I'm loud, and it's clear. The presentation is visible to all of you, right? On this note, we'll quickly begin with the session. Let's first of all understand the overall uh, uh, difficulty level and what actually came up in the paper. Okay. Um, irrespective of how many questions you have solved, let's actually first see the kind of question that actually appeared in the paper and the difficulty level. And then we'll also discuss about which questions were worth solving which questions were not worth solving also. Cool. See, the overall con section that we have just taken now, there were four major sections, right, which is going to remain constant across all the papers that you'll be taking as a mock paper. Arithmetic gave you around 10 odd questions. Algebra gave you nine questions. Geometry gave you four questions. And Modern Math gave you around about one or two questions which came up in the paper. Okay, that this is the paper which you have just solved. Okay. Now, this is what you can expect in the paper to come up. Majoritively, you can expect 60 to 65 percentage of a paper is going to be predominantly heavily weighted by arithmetic and algebra only. Is this clear? I'm again repeating. More than 60 percentage of a paper is going to be predominantly heavily weighted by arithmetic and algebra also. The proportion of geometry, the proportion of modern math questions has gone low all the time. What you may expect, yes, if you want to clear this paper of CAT, or let's say if your, if your performance wants to go up in the uh, mock test, whichever mock test you are giving, the important chapters of arithmetic and algebra cannot be left out. Okay. If you're damn good in arithmetic and algebra, you can actually score more than 95 percentile in the actual paper. Okay. Now let's discuss also about the level of difficulty of this paper. Okay. Now CAD being a paper, I mean, it's a management paper and any management paper, it's not going to be a standard level of difficulty of the questions which you may expect to come up. At the same time, not all the questions are worth solving also. In a given paper, you'll see easy, moderate, and difficult questions to get randomly distributed. It is not the case the first four are easy, the next five are difficult. Not going to happen. So as said, you have to wisely choose the easy and the moderate questions and left or leave the difficult level questions which actually come up in the paper. As such, your key insight, which I want to give you, is the question selection. What I'm saying is as a thumb rule is when you, let's say it's, it's as simple as selection of question is as simple as the selection of question, which means which question is not worth doing is also is something which I would have to consider. So that the leftover questions which I'm considering are the only questions which I will put my or invest my time in. Clear? So my only objective now is to scan is my, my is objective is to scan the level of difficulty and choose those wise questions which is going to come up in the paper. Cool. Is this clear to all of you? So when you see a question, not every question is worth solving. I repeat, not every question is going to be worth solving. You choose the question wise, invest the time wisely, and then get the maximum ROI for, from each question. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, the questions which has gone up in the paper, right? And what I'm going to do now is uh, we'll see whether each question, whatever we are discussing about, is worth solving, worth leaving, if it is worth solving, what needs to be done to crack this question with the most simplistic approach? I'm not going to teach you math. My only objective now is how can I beautifully solve these questions, choosing the wise questions and doing the right time management. The first question is from a topic which is of number system. And these are most one of the most standard questions which comes up in the paper. I repeat, these are one of the most standard questions which will ever come up in the paper of number system, which deals with divisibility rules. Okay. Even if you have known the know the basics of divisibility rule, such a complicated question, such a complex situation, still you'll be able to do it well 
provided you have a right inside of what number system is all about, provided you know what divisibility rules is all about, because all the values have the base of 10, 10, 10. It starts with 10 raised to 10, goes till 10 raised to uh, 10, zero. So, uh, cool. And the question is about find the remainder when this value has been divided by seven. One thing which I can look into from this question perspective is all the values have a base of 10. Now, any question which I'm looking at, for example, let's say if I ask you find a remainder of 10 by seven, if I simply ask you this question, find a remainder of 10 by seven, you'll say the remainder would be three. Why? Because 10 is nothing but seven plus three divided by seven. Seven by seven is perfectly divisible. So the remainder is of three by seven, which will always come, right? So even if I take the first part of the question, which is 10 raised to 10 divided by seven, it can be expressed in the form of seven plus three raised to 10 divided by seven. Again, the remainder would be as simple as three raised to 10 by seven. I repeat, the question is going to be three raised to 10 divided by seven. The second part, similarly, will be seven plus three raised to 100 divided by seven, with the remainder would be three raised to 100 divided by seven, which is three raised to 10 by seven, the whole square, likewise. Clear? All what you can see is three raised to 10 by seven. I, the only thing which I want is find out the remainder of three raised to 10 by seven. Okay. How would you start? You can either find a pattern or find a constant remainder, which will always come up. See, if I start with three raised to one, two, three, four, five, three raised to five by seven, if you consider this value, three raised to five is 243. And uh, 243, if I divide by seven, uh, 245 is a value which is perfectly divisible by seven. So 243 by seven possibly will give you a remainder of minus two. And similarly, three raised to five by seven into three raised to five by seven will make the value as three raised to 10 by seven. Clear? So minus two is going to come from this part. The second part is also going to give you minus two. Minus two to minus will become plus. So the remainder of three raised to 10 by seven is going to be how much? It's going to be four. I repeat, what we have disclosed is three raised to 10 by seven is going to give you a remainder of four. Now, all the values will have the same basis. I repeat, all the values will have the same basis. So the same remainder will come up from here, 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 here. So how many times am I getting four as a remainder? I'm getting four, 10 times. So my final remainder would be four into 10 divided by seven, 40 divided by seven, 35 plus five, the remainder finally, which we are disclosing here would be what? Would be answer option C, which is five. Clear? I said it was not a difficult question. The only thing which I have to crack is 10 raised to 10 divided by seven. I started by 10 by seven. I found the remainder three. Dividing 10 raised to 10 by seven as seven plus three by seven raised to 10 is the only thing which I've done. Clear? In a matter of three steps, you will be able to tackle this question well. Worth solving, worth investing your time in. Very well, you can try, get three marks positively in this question without leaving this. Clear? Second question, possibly if I look into, I, if I read this question, it gives you a sense. Possibly you would have to make a lot of cases, a lot of permutation combination is going to be available inside. So I might get a right answer or possibly I may also get a wrong answer if, if I missed on any of the given key set. Clear? So I give you as a bench, uh, as, a, uh, as a thumb rule. The question, the rule says, whenever you are, the question involves to make a lot of cases, case number one, possibility number one, possibility number two, possibility number three, all such cases can be considered as a round two question. I repeat, all such cases can be considered as a round two question. My only objective is there were 25 questions which came up. The easy and moderate question would be around about 15 questions. I'm going to select these round one questions, which is worth investing time in. Clear? The remaining questions, if I get a lot of time in the end, I will possibly see them towards the end also. Cool. I'll ballpark this figure, uh, this question to be in round two question. If I get time, I'll come back. The next question, which you can see is of quadratic equation. I mean, if you read the question, you'll get a sense that it is not going to be a difficult question. The quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c has one root two. And the quadratic equation where the coefficients have been interchanged cx square bx and a is equal to zero has a root of minus one by three. The question is, find the sum of the root. Sum of the root is minus b by a. Sum of the root is minus b by a. Or possibly if one root has been found out, the second root has to be found out is what the question is all about. Clear? How shall you do this question? I'm not going to teach you the technicalities of uh, quadratic equation, but believe me one thing, okay? Um, if the basic fundamental of quadratic equations is clear, 
let's say if you have a x square plus b x plus c is equal to zero has the root of alpha and beta, right? Imagine if this is one of the equation which has got the root of alpha and beta. If I interchange the coefficient like c x square plus b x plus a is equal to zero, will have the roots of one by alpha and one by beta. I mean, if you know this fundamental, you will not invest more than ten seconds to crack this question. That's it. If I interchange the coefficient, the roots gets reciprocal. As simple as that. So, the when when the coefficients have been interchanged, the roots have been found out to be minus one by three. In one case, the roots are plus two. I repeat, in equation number one, the root is plus two. In equation number two, the root is minus three. Let's say this is alpha and beta. So this will be how much? This is one by alpha and one by beta, which gives you a sense that if alpha is plus two, the second root of equation number one would be how much? It's going to be as simple as minus three. That's it. If for the second equation the root is minus one by three, so the second root is going to be how much? It's going to be plus one by two. That's it. Nothing more or less. I'm going to do. Itna kar diya. We are going to go. You have got root number one. You have got root number two. The question is only about find the sum of this. What is minus three plus two? All of us know this well. The answer is going to be minus one, and hence the answer for the given question was minus one. Clear? Very well. You have solved and tackled question number two. Also, is this clear? Give me a quick thumbs up if you have understood this concept and worth solving these questions, which has come in the paper of your mock test, which you have recently taken. As said. Any paper is going to be a random distribution of easy, moderate, and difficult question. Whatever you know, you should be the best in this. Whatever you don't know, be the first person to skip it. Leaving a question is as simple and as important as selecting a wise question. Is this clear to all of you, everyone out here? Going ahead, possibly we'll see some of the good questions which may also come up in the paper. Like if I see this question, good one, Tarun. I mean, the question which you are seeing here possibly deals with a lot of data, but let me give you a thumb rule: the more the data is, the easier it's going to be for you for you to solve this question. I mean, this is not a question which I will invest my time in. This is a simple question of percentages, arithmetic questions. You will never ever skip. I repeat, arithmetic questions you will never ever skip. This is a very straightforward question which they have given you, equalizing the average production for the one year. With the total production for the four year, if you make three equations very well, you will be able to solve this question very well. I also hope and expect all of you who are live in this session have actually invested time in this question because all of you might have got the answer right for the given question also. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Going ahead, let me teach you some better perspective for the questions which has come on time, speed, and distance also. Now, THD, many of the students face difficulty in. But believe me, any paper of CAT, you can expect three to four questions purely of time, speed, and distance. By hook or by crook, you got to, got to, got to solve this. Okay. The question says Rajat and his friend got laid for the function, which was about to start by 2 p.m. Shubham told if he drove his car at 60 kmph, he would reach his destination by 2 hours 15 p.m. Okay. So he drove the car at 80 kmph and reached his destination prior. To the time which is 145. If they had driven the car at 90 kmph for the first half and 60 kmph for the second half, uh, they would have reached a destination by earlier than 215. The question is find the value of time. How much earlier this, these people might have reached if they distribute the overall journey at 90 kmph and 60 kmph half an hour. Okay, let's see. My speed and time I know is my inverse proportionality functionality. If speed goes up, time has to go down. Speed initially was 60, it went up to 80. By what fraction the value increased? 20 upon 60, which is 1 by 3. So speed is going up by 1 by 3, so time will go down by 1 by 4. All what they're saying is that time should reduce by 1 fourth of the time. Clear? How much less time I have I taken? From 2 hours 15 minutes, I reached on 1 hour 45 minutes. So the time lag is 30 minutes. So they are saying one fourth of the time is 30 minutes. So the overall time I can consider it to be how much? 120 minutes. 120 minutes is basically two hours. I know my time is two hours. I know my original speed is 60 kmph. So the overall journey is going to be 120 kilometer. That's something which I know. 
clear? If this is known, breaking down 120 in two equal parts, which is 60 and 60, is not going to be a big deal. So the question is as simple as dividing 60 by the first half of the speed, which is 60, and then the remaining would be 90. This is what the time which I will take. 60 by 60 will give you one hour. This is two third of an hour. Two third of an hour would be how much? 40 minutes. So the overall time which I will take will be 60 minutes plus 40 minutes, around about 100 minutes I will take, even if I go ahead with the values what has been given to me in the question. Is this clear, Tarun, Veena, and everyone out here, everyone in the class, is this clear to everyone? Give me a quick thumbs up if you have understood this. All of you, very easy question which has come up, provided the inverse of proportionality functionality is known to us, very well you have solved this question well. Clear? Now let me teach you a good question, the way of solving a rather. Geometry questions is always fun to do, I repeat. If you have understood this concept, which I'm going to teach you, you can expect similar questions, which is going to come up in the actual cat also. And believe me, there are high probability that you may expect the similar kind of question. I repeat, there are high probability that you may expect a similar kind of question, which will appear in the paper, which will just appear in the paper. It says two circles, A and B, have equal radius of K intersect each other. Okay. So they are saying, let's say this is the center and this is the center. And you can just visualize that these are the centers of the given two circle. Okay, they intersect just at the center. What is the ratio of the common chord to the total perimeter of the circle? Okay, so it is being told to you that the radius is K. If the radius is K, perimeter would be two pi K plus two pi K because there are two circles. So the overall perimeter would be how much? It's gonna be just two pi K. You can consider it to be one, two, three, four. You can assume as a random value. Now the question is about the length of the chord. The question is find the length of the chord. Let me term this as A and B. That the question is about find the length of the common chord. This is the common chord which you will have between them, right? But passing through the centers, you can always expect that there would be a triangle which will be made internally when two circles intersect at the center. And around, you can also expect that if this is the center, and so the radius would be from one point to the other point, the overall radius we are expecting it to be, the overall radius we are expecting it to be, let's assume it to be K or whatever we are looking into. We also know that this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, all the values are 90 degree, right? This has been clearly stated in the question. Now, if you know this much, nothing more you will need to do. I repeat, nothing more you will need to do. Let me term this as P, let me term this as Q, let me term this as R, okay? Now, if this is the midpoint, so the total PR can be equally distributed up to PQ and QR, right? Which I'm saying, if PR is the radius, PQ is R by two. PQ is going to be how much? PQ would be R by two. If this is the radius, this part is going to be R by two. From P to A, the, I mean, the line is touching from the center to the, uh, apex of the given circle. So this is going to be the radius also. So if I have to make you visualize what diagram we are making, if I just have to make you visualize what diagrams we are making, you very well, you will be able to solve the question without doing anything. They are saying, dude, all what they're saying is this is R by two. This is R. This is 90 degree. The question is about find the length of this part. Because whatever is the length of this part, the same will be the length of these lower portion also. Now tell me how much this would be. This is 90 degree. If this is R, this is R, this value would be how much? This value would be how much? Come on. This value would be root 3 by 2 R. Because Pythagoras theorem, if you know A square plus B square, would be nothing but R square. Right? So root 3 by 2 R the whole square plus R by 2 the whole square. If you do it, will become how much? 4 R square by uh, 3 R square by 4 plus R square by 4 will make the value as 4 R square by 4 and the value will become only R square, the root will give you R, right? Which gives you a sense that this length, which is AQ, will be root 3 by 2 R. So the lower part, QB, should also be root 3 by 2 R. 
So root three by two R plus root three by two R will make the values root three R. R is nothing but K. So I got the perimeter uh, or the length of the chord as root three K. K, K will get canceled and the ratio would be as simple as root three upon four pi. The only learning which I can give you is keep it as a constant. Whenever you see this question, this common chord, I repeat, this common chord is always, uh, we can write down as a thumb rule, this common chord will always be root three by two or considered to be the whole chord. If the radius is K, the common chord will be root three times K. Write down on the piece of paper, wherever you are writing. If the radius is R, then the common chord length will be root three times R. As simple as this. If you know this, you will not even take more than 15 seconds to solve this question, which I'm giving you here. I hope it is clean. I hope it is clear to all of you. Everyone out here, is this clear? All of you, have you guys solved this question? If you have not solved this question, this was one of the questions which is worth solving of geometry also. Is this clear to everyone, all of you? I mean, possibly to explain you, I would have, might have taken more time, but this is not a difficult question that we cannot solve. We all are way mature than what we are thinking as very well you have solved this question. Let's see the, again, question number 10, a very easy mediocre question of time and work. You will not take more time. Three workers together can do a job in 12 days. Two of them is faster than the third one. Each of the two faster workers works twice as fast as the third worker. This is the only hint. Each of the two faster worker works twice as fast as the third worker. So if the third worker works at the efficiency of A by two, possibly the other two will be working at a speed of A and A. That's what the efficiency is, no? If one of them is working at the efficiency of A by two, the other two will be working at the efficiency of A and A, double, double, right? They each, together they have, they have completed it in 12 days, I repeat, 12, together, they have completed it in 12 days. So possibly the amount of work which each of them will do is 12A, 12A, and 12 into A by two. This total should be equal to the total work done, which is one. Half of 12 is six, six plus 12 plus 12 will give you as 30. So 30A is equal to one. Efficiency of one is one by 30. If in one day, one thirtieth of the work will be done, Total time taken by any of the faster worker would be how many days? Will be as simple as 30 days. I mean, if you ask me what kind of question is this, this is not even worth of the CAT level. I'm, and I'm sure questions like this will also come up in your paper. Questions like this, you will also be able to tackle them well. Solving, or so this question gave you around about 25 questions. This paper gave you 25 questions. Now, if you ask me that, sir, I'm expecting 90 percent time just 90 percentile, so how many questions should I solve? I would say, if you're able to solve 10 questions well, you will be 90 percentile plus in the paper. If you're saying, so I'm aiming for 95 percentile, how much should I be able to solve? If you're aiming for 90 percentile, 13 questions out of 25, if you're able to solve, good to go. If you're aiming 99 percentile, I would say rather 16 to 17 questions out of 25, we need to solve. This is what you need to keep in your head. Okay, what number of questions I need to solve? What is the aim? <clears throat> Where do I have to reach? If these answers are there, selecting questions, solving these questions, managing time is not going to be a big deal in the paper. <clears throat> now I'm going to give you a good question which has come in. This question is from algebra, from, from algebraic expression. Abhinav, if you ask me, as said, if you're aiming for 90 percentile, I'm going to give you the analysis of quant paper. As said, if you're aiming for print, out of 25, as said, if you're able to solve 10 to 11 questions with more than 95 percentage accuracy, just one question wrong, like 12 attempt and 11, 11 right, very well you'll be able to get how much? You'll be able to get 90 percentile plus in the paper. Clear? Next question. Easiest of the question which has ever come. The question is find the largest integer n such that n plus 10, 10 divides n cube plus how much? I'm right. Now, 100 is not a perfect cube, but 1000 is a perfect cube. So I'll rewrite this in this form, which is n cube plus 10 cube, which is a cube plus b cube, which is a plus b in bracket a square minus ab plus b square. If you rewrite this, possibly n cube plus 10 cube is nothing but n plus 10 in bracket n square minus 10n plus 100. 
right? But this is the value of how much? This is the value of n cube plus thousand, right? So I got to remove nine hundred from this. I have to remove nine hundred from this. Only then the value will come out to be as n cube plus hundred, right? Now we also know n plus ten will be a value which will be able to divide the whole number. I repeat. N plus ten will be a value which will be able to divide the whole value because this is one of the factor. So if the whole value is divisible by n plus ten, obviously nine hundred will also be divisible by n plus ten. Because this is divisible, the whole value is divisible, so nine hundred will also be divisible by n plus ten. The question is as simple as nine hundred is divisible by n plus ten. What is the maximum value of n by n? Now n now I have to maximize, so it's simple. The maximum value which possibly can give you as an integer for the whole fraction would be 890 because 890 plus 10 will make the value as 900 and 900 by 900 is perfectly divisible. Cool. So what is the maximum value of n which you found out? The answer is as simple as 890. The answer is as simple as 890. Is this clear? I mean, worth solving, guys. It is not a paper that you can get less than 15 questions right. Very well. I mean, with some practice, just with some more practice, you guys are doing wonderfully good. You guys are doing well. If you have understood it well, I mean, it's not going to be a big deal to crack this question. The only thing that you have to do, Sally here, was n cube plus 10 cube, which is making it as n cube plus 1000, right? This value is going to give you n plus 10, n square plus 10n plus How much? Thousand, right? Plus hundred, right? Now, but this is the value of n cube plus thousand. I want n cube plus hundred. So, how much I have to remove? I have to remove nine hundred. No, I have to remove nine hundred to make it divisible by n cube plus hundred. That's the only change that I've made. Nothing else. Not going to be a difficult question, provided you have understood what questions are we looking at. Okay, again, a time, speed, distance question. I mean, TSD is one of those questions. If you practice it well, you will get hundred percentage accuracy and efficiency. That's what the competency that you need to build upon. Right? Let's look at question number seventeen. Jivan Neeru live in the same street, often walk towards each other. If they leave their home at ten eight a.m., they meet at eight o four. I repeat, if they meet, leave at eight. A.M. They meet at eight o'clock. We know the question is nine uh, hundred has to be divisible by n plus ten. So what value is the maximum of n? The maximum of n that you can consider would be nine hundred minus ten, which is eight ninety. That's how we have found out the maximum value of n. So they are saying this is Jivan guy, this is Neeru guy. If they leave leave at eight a.m., if they leave at eight a.m. They meet at eight o four, right? So he has taken four minutes. This fellow has also taken four minutes. Other way round. Jivan and Neeru. Second situation. Okay. Now it has been said Jivan does not leave home at eight o three. So leave Jivan leaves at eight o three, and um, Neeru leaves at eight a.m. They meet at eight o five. So this time Neeru has walked for five minutes, and this fellow has walked for. Two minutes, three minutes, uh, two minutes. Clear? If I assume the speed of uh, G one is x, and neither is y, we I know the speed, I know the time. Possibly you can say four x plus four y is the total distance in the first case. Similarly, next time two x plus five y is the total distance in the second case. Right? We also know the distance is going to remain the constant. I repeat, it has been told. I know one thing. Distance is going to remain constant. Clear? So all what I know here is 4x plus 4y is equal to 2x plus 5y. Clear? If you solve this, you will get how much? You will get y is equal to 2x. You will get y is equal to 2x. You put it any of the given equation. So 2 times y is 4 times. So this will be 4x. 4 into 2 8x. And the total distance will be 12x. Similarly, if I invest here, 5y will become 10x. 
plus 2x, the total is 12x, which means the total distance will be 12 units. And the answer is going to be, the answer is going to be how much? 12. Clear? The answer is going to be 12 minutes, which you will take overall. Clear? Not at all a difficult question. Not at all a difficult question. But all what you need to do is, whenever you see a question of time, speed, and distance, you would have to visualize and then solve the questions accordingly. I hope this is clear, everyone. Is this clear, all of you? Siley, 2x and 5x, if they are leaving at, so if one person is leaving at 8, the second person is leaving at 8 or 3, they are meeting at 8 or 5. So how much time the first person has arrived? Two minutes, sorry, five minutes. And the second person, 8 or 3 to 8 or 5, two minutes. So it is 2x plus 5y is equal to 4x plus 4y, as simple as this. Nothing more or less. Very well you have solved this question. Clear? I mean, solving arithmetic questions is not going to be difficult whenever you are when you, whenever you are solving this question. Make sure you are using the simplistic approach. I mean, questions like this it are called as a sitters in the paper. For how many values of m, m non-negative integer, such that a quadratic equation 4x square plus 16x plus 4m is equal to zero has a real root. We know the functionality of real root in a quadratic equation if you want a real root, then b square minus 4ac should be more than or equal to zero. That's what I will do. 16 square is 256 minus four times, four times 4m should be more than or equal to zero. That's what I will do. So this is 256 minus 64m should be more than or equal to zero. 64m should be more than or equal to 256. Which all values n can take? M can take, which all values? M can take zero, one, two, three, and four, right? This is because 64, four size 256. I repeat, 64, four size 256. So which all values can you find out? You can find out these are five values which is possible. One, two, three, four, and zero. I mean, one, one step solution, just one step solutions to crack these questions. And believe me, solving 10 odd questions in the paper of CAD is not going to be a big deal for any one of us. I repeat, for any one of us, it's not going to be a big deal. And again, the length of the question is not going to decide the complexity of the question. I repeat, the length of the question is not going to decide the complexity of the question. The only thing which you need to do is, the only thing which you need to do is choose the question well. Clear? Is this clear? All of you, is this clear? Is this, all of you have understood this? Now again, arithmetic, let's take one more good question which has come in the paper of arithmetic and uh, let's see if you're able to solve this. Of all the students of a certain dormitory, half of the students are in the first year and the rest of them are in second year. So whatever the number of students may be, let's say 100 percentage, I have got first year students, I've got second year students, clear? The first year students is 50. The second year students is also 50. The second year students is also 50. Clear? It has been said, if four fifth of the students have not declared their majors, if four fifth of them have not declared their majors, one fifth of them might have declared their majors, which is 20%. 20% of 50 is how much? This is 10. Clear? Similarly, uh, the fraction of students who have declared their majors is three times the fraction of the first year students who have declared their majors. Declared majors, first year is 10. So declared majors, second year would be 30. The question is as simple as then what fraction of this total number of students in the second year who have not declared their majors? Now here, it's as simple as there were 50 students in the second year, 30 have declared their majors. So 20 have not declared their majors, right? The question is what fraction of the total number of students in the dorm? So the fraction is not going to be 20 upon 50. The fraction is going to be 20 upon 100 because in the dorm, there were 100 students. Fraction 2 upon 10, 1 by 5, 20 percentage, and that's my answer. Is this clear?
all of you, is this clear? Everyone out here. Clear? And do you think solving questions like this is going to be a big deal? No, I repeat, solving questions like this is not at all going to be a big deal. Clear? All of you. I mean, even if I leave the questions which has come, let's take questions which are difficult, but I'm saying the questions which are easy, the questions which are worth solving, are the questions which I will never miss on. I repeat, are the questions which I will never miss on. But we have this misconceptions that the length of the question will always decide the complexity of the question. But believe me, the length of the question has never decided the complexity of the questions in the CAD paper. Never, ever. All what you need to do is, what my take is, the lengthy the question is, the easy it's going to be for you to solve. Provided it is coming from your uh, journal of this uh, forte. If you're good in arithmetic, you very well can solve the questions which we are looking at. Clear? Now, for example, if I give you this question, this question, uh, again, an arithmetic question which you are able to see on the screen, they are saying question number 16. Two containers contains mixture. I repeat, two containers contains mixture of milk and water. There are two containers, milk, water, milk, water. In one container, the ratio of milk and water is 4 is to 1. In the second container, the ratio of milk and water is 1 is to 3. 10 liters from the first mixture, from the mixture of the first container, and 16 liters from the mixture of the second container has been taken out and has been mixed, has been mixed in the third container, which already is containing some pure milk. So let, let's assume there's some pure milk and this is the mixture, right? Pure milk have the concentration of 100 percentage. That's something which I know, right? Uh, it has been found after mixing, the ratio of milk and water in the new container is 3 to 2. So the question is find the volume of the new mixture, which already has, which already has got some uh, pure milk into it. 4 is to 1 here, 1 is to 3 here. When you're taking 10 liters of it, what is the milk which is going to come out from here? It's going to be 4 by 5 into 10, which is 8. So 8 liters of milk is going to come from here. Similarly, you're removing 16 from here. So 1 fourth of 16, which is 4 liters of milk, is coming from here. So 8 is coming from here. 4 is coming from here. Obviously, if I'm going to mix them, the total mixture will have 12 liters of milk. But if I see the total volume, this is 10, this is 16. The total is going to be 26. Clear? I repeat, the total is going to be how much? The total is going to be 26. Is this clear to everyone? So if I see this, this ratio would be how much? 2, 6, 2, 13. So 6 by 13, I repeat, 6 by 13 is the fraction. 6 by 13 is the fraction um, of milk, which is there in the new container, which is coming up. But the mixture, so 6 by 13 is coming from mixing them. But there's also pure milk. It has been said it has also been mixed with pure milk. So pure milk will have how much of milk? As a concentration, it's going to be 1 or 100 percentage, right? Now the question is, when you mix both of them, I repeat, when you mix both of them, the ratio of milk and water is 3 to 2. So towards the end, the final concentration of milk is how much? 3 upon 5. The final concentration of milk is going to be how much? It's going to be 3 upon 5. Now the question is only this much. I repeat, the question now is only and only this much. After mixing or the two mixtures, I got the concentration of 6 upon 13. There's already some pure milk, which has a concentration of 1. After mixing them, the ratio is becoming 3 upon 5. So what proportion the values have been mixed is the question of volume which I have to find. So proportion here will be how much? 1 minus 3 by 5. Here it's going to be how much? It's going to be uh, 3 upon 5 minus 6 upon 13 will be 6 upon 13. This is what the proportion will be. So this value 1 minus 3 by 5 will give you 2 upon 5. I hope this is clear to everyone. And this value will become 9 upon 65. 
Now, if I take out the ratio of 2 upon 5 upon 9 upon 65, so it's 2 upon 5 reciprocating this value. This is going to become this. So 13 5 is 65. 2 into 13 is 26. And this is 9. So 26 parts of milk is will be there and 9 parts of water will be there. So 26 plus 9, I mean, that's a simple thing now. What is the part now? 26 plus 9 would be how much? 26 plus 9 would be as simple as 35 units, which will be there, or 35 units as a little milliliter. What is being given to you? You will just want this. Clear? Is this clear to everyone? All of you. Is this clear to everyone out here? I mean, this is these are the questions which are worth solving in the paper. We cannot ever even think to leave questions which has come from arithmetic, which has come from algebra. If people out here, have you understood it well? Give me a quick thumbs up, all of you who are live, if you have understood this concept. And if you have understood how to tackle these questions. Clear? So what are the key takeaways that we have understood from this construction analysis? One. The paper is going to be a mixture of easy, moderate, and difficult level question. That's one. Whatever the difficulty level is, you would have to choose the questions wise. If you say, I have not done with, let's say, majority of the question or chapters, I'll not give a mock. That's a wrong attitude. You, whatever the stage of learning you are on, you would just have to and have to take mock tests. That's going to give you a lot of competency that how much more do you need to work upon? How you need to work upon? All these things will be really, really important when you solve these questions or when you tackle these questions. So it is highly and very much recommended that you would have to and have to take mock tests aggressively, seriously, and make sure you are not making any lag. There should be a crystal plan of action that every week, 10 days of a timeline, you would have to take a mock test. After taking a mock test, you will get the difficulty level. You will get the areas of concern, which all topics you need to work upon, how you need to work upon, what are the sources you need to use. Then going back to topic level tests, going back to your basic reference book, all these things will be really important. I repeat, all these things will be really important for you to solve these questions in the actual paper also. So the only objective is whatever level of competency you are on, as of now, you would have to ensure, I repeat, you would have to ensure that you guys are taking mocks seriously, aggressively. Cool. On this note, we'll start with the second section analysis, which is LR and DI. Clear? We beautifully have solved 16 odd questions, which is going to give you 95 percentile, and we have taken half an hour of the time to solve these questions. Clear? Other questions were also worth doing, and we'll solve these questions in the next session. By now, I guess Heather says is going to be joining the session, and he's going to take the session live for all of you. Heather, are you able to hear me? Hello. Hello, good evening. Yeah, you can just make me host and I can continue from here. One second. All right. All right, so guys, uh, are you able to hear me, everyone? People who are there, okay. Uh, and. Uh, let me quickly share my screen as well. Just a minute. Great. All right, so uh, here we go. So firstly, uh, firstly, I would want to know that people who are there, how many of you have actually given mock, okay? Uh, how many of you have actually given the mock? Kitne log mock deke aare hai yaha pe uh, analysis ke liye and kitne log aare hai yaha pe sirf solutions dekhne ke liye. People have given mock and put a yes. Okay, that's fine. Even if you have not given, uh, that's fine. I mean, I will not, uh, I'm not going to judge you on that. But how many of you have given mock so that I understand? Because the... The overall discussion is more going to be towards the approach 
okay uh because ella says obviously okay uh great okay anand says given mall tarun says veena says given urmika says given good one guys good one so people who have not given okay uh my my i mean i'm sure okay uh abhijit sir must have told you this okay but my uh advice and my request is that please give mock okay and if you give mock and then come for the analysis that's going to be really benefit okay uh so the main idea i mean let me go ahead okay with uh with what i have to show you okay with regards to just a minute okay where is it all right just a minute okay so yeah so when it comes to when it comes to logic okay uh, before even i get into the sets okay there were six different session on that how many of you uh, would say people have given the uh, given the mock okay uh, no was it a easy section a tough section a very tough section i would want to hear it from you guys also okay that how did you find the overall section was it very difficult for you was it very difficult okay was it not very difficult or uh, how because first lr uh, lr mock okay uh, lr section that you must have given so definitely you must have experienced a lot of things here so any any inputs on that how was the overall mock okay when it came to mock okay i have this on the screen now okay uh, look at the analysis here guys we will look at the analysis okay the analysis is very simple and clear okay that you had six sets okay you have overall of six sets that you see okay and each set having four 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 questions okay this was the overall set okay uh the, yes doshi said it was challenging okay it was it was it was i think for me if you ask me it was very much on something uh of last year okay 2020 if you see okay this was one of the most difficult sections okay in 2020 or so if you guys know okay last year around 8 to 9 questions if you got correct okay that was around 98 percentile okay so for me this mock was on in terms of the difficulty level particularly this particular section okay in terms of the difficulty level okay this was very much at the same level okay that you had for the 2020 paper okay six different sets okay i have written all of that i have written the moderate you know the difficulty level this is this is the difficulty level which i thought is the actual case when i was solving the particular test okay so um, now let us understand that how because here what happens here getting into each and every set is not going to be the right thing the main main thing okay that is required okay and which is a good thing that needs to be done here is to pick up the right set okay and i think that is if the if you guys have have understood that part if you guys have gained that skill okay by giving mocks that where you are able to pick up that right set that one or two set also because this is the first mock that we are discussing right now this is this was the first mock okay um, the veena says sir it was moderate but time constraint issues didn't allow us to do much and as it was tough it was our first mock yeah being the first mock right now what should you what what should be your aim your aim even if in this mock someone has got one set completely completely right okay i think his his is a winner okay you should consider you should you should pat your back okay if you have got one set completely right okay that that's a very very good deal okay in this particular mock because this was tough this was your first mock okay now if you would have got this kind of a mock later on okay uh, let's say after 10 15 mocks if you get this kind of a mock okay then by that time i would consider someone should be doing at least two and a half sets okay for a for a good score okay around two and a half sets but for now okay i think one set even if like just one set completely right is also decent enough good enough okay all right so now comes the point that sir how you should be how you should have attempted this particular mock okay how you should have identified which is easy which is difficult okay that's that's the next question because what people do people go sequence wise okay you had total of 40 minutes for this particular section right 40 minutes you have six sets to be seen now tell me even if you get 10 minutes for one set okay that's going to give that's going to take 60 minutes so how are you going to do that so it is very clear from the very first and the initial part that do not even have a mindset of you know solving all the six sets that's not going to happen okay that's really not going to happen not going to happen on your exam also in your cat exam also that's not going to happen so how do you approach how do you go ahead again okay, how do you do how do you, how do you identify first okay the day where you reach out to one set okay that you should be moving on to two sets okay 
and three sets. Now this is going to be your entire journey, okay, of mocks. Okay, right from the first mock to the to the last mock. Let's say your aim should be this: that sir, in any given situation, in any given mock, okay, I am reaching till three sets. Correct. Now this is this is the three levels. So that's why right now, okay, we are at level one. Okay, so I would say let us have at least one set correct. Okay. Now when I go ahead, okay, this is the first that comes uh, first set that comes uh, you know, in front of me. And what I have told you, okay, I have I have taken my sessions. Okay, people who have who must have attended my puzzle sessions. Okay, I always say that the more the direct information, the more the direct information. Okay, the easier the set is. Right. Okay. The more the indirect information. Okay, the set is more difficult. So my job is the first. First, around six to seven minutes. Okay, put a stopwatch. Okay, and then you should do this thing that I am going to give you six to seven minutes time. Okay, where what you should do is you should quickly read a set. One set reading might take not more than one minute. One minute is on a very high side, but ideally around forty-five to fifty seconds is what you should spend on just understanding the set. Okay. Again, repeating my point, what are you going to understand in this fifty seconds and all that? You are just going to look at the amount of direct data and the amount of indirect data. Okay, the more direct data, you will mark that okay as let's say a easy level or a moderate level kind of a set. Okay, and if you think there's more of indirect data, then you would mark that as a tough level set. Okay, that's that's purely that you have to do. So first, after at the end of seventh or eighth minute, okay, at the end of seventh or eighth minute. Is where you should have the clarity that which is the set that you are going to attempt, because the first set that you are going to attempt, okay, is going to be really, really, uh, no, important. That's going to be really breakthrough, okay, for your confidence level. That's also going to be really crucial in terms of picking up your score. Okay, because understand what's going to happen. Okay, I'm just, I'm just running through the the actual scenario of your mock in front of you. The paper comes in front of you at the eighth minute. Let's say you have decided on this is the first set I'm going to attempt, and this one set takes let's say around twelve minutes of time. Let's say for example, it takes around twelve minutes. Okay, eight minutes have gone plus twelve. That means at the end of twenty minutes, okay, which means half of the section time has gone. Okay, half of the section time has gone. Okay, so uh, so the point is this. Okay, that point is this. That twenty minutes, okay, half of the section has gone, okay, and that is where, okay, you see uh, that you have at least one set done, okay. If it is one set done at the end of twenty minutes, okay, you are at a good position, and that's what you have to achieve in the initial mocks. That's what you have to achieve, okay. Let's be very clear: eight minutes to analyze and pick up the right set. Next twelve minutes goes in that first set that you're solving. You get hundred percent accuracy. You should be aiming at first set. Obviously, this is the easy set, so you should be aiming at hundred percent accuracy. Okay, four questions you are getting right. Okay, out of these four questions, okay, uh, you know you have three three marks per question. That means you already reached okay at around around you know, total of twelve marks that you've reached here. Okay, so this is the and I if you have reached here, I'm telling you you have already in the bracket of eighty percent time. You already in the bracket of eighty percent time, close to that. Okay, comes the next twenty minutes which is there in your hand. Okay. When you are analyzing this first seven eight minutes, okay, as I told you, you have to mark easy, moderate, okay, M E M E. You should put that in front of you in your rough paper. First set E, for second set M, whatever, okay. Pick, come to the next set. The next set that you come up, okay, the ideal time is where well around if you put ten minutes of time for that, okay, is you is where you do the second set, okay, and then the third set is going to be another ten minutes of time, okay. That's purely how the three sets would go. In the in, in the in the entire frame, seven minutes okay of analysis, picking up the right set okay, making your first set okay, first second third set okay, making that sequence okay, and then attempting that. Now the in the initial mocks okay, you might not be okay, you might not be able to uh, no, you might not be able to solve three sets okay, that's completely fine okay. As I told you before, even if it's one set, two sets, it's good enough. Okay, by I think by after tenth mock onwards also, if you are reaching to the level of three sets that you you are able to attempt, very good. Okay, so that's the real picture. That's that's the first thing that you have to understand. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mock. Okay, of the seven first seven eight minutes because this is where okay the first seven eight minutes where you have to pick up the right set is where a lot of people go wrong. 
Okay, the area where you go wrong is the first seven, eight minutes itself. Okay, and because you pick up a wrong set, okay, then what is what's going to happen? That means the next 12 minutes, okay, or rather, let's say you, you're done with you no know, half an hour also, and till now you have not got even one question right or you know one set right, and that is where you, what happens, that is where the panic buttons okay, panic starts. Okay, so at this point of time, at this point of time, okay, understand in LRDI section, the first seven, eight minutes is going to be really crucial. And today I'm going to show you that in this actual mock, okay, that how you would have done that. Okay, perfect. So if I start off with this question, okay, what is this question telling me? Four friends PQRS, okay, were playing a game in which they randomly pick up a ball, okay, uh, out of five balls, okay, the, that means the five balls they're picking up one ball of five different colors, okay, so five different colors from a bag. That means there's one bag, okay, and here you have one, two, three, four, five balls, okay. There are five balls. They played the game for four rounds, okay. They played the game for four rounds, okay. Just a minute, quick check. All right, sorry. Uh, yeah. So they uh, they played the game for uh, four rounds. Okay, that means uh, there are four rounds of game. Okay, the balls were red, this, this, this. Okay, there are five colors also given to you. Whenever they picked the ball, they got these, 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 these points for picking up the purple. Okay, and all this. So pretty clear. Okay, five balls are there. Okay, there are four friends. Okay, four rounds are there. Okay, you go, you pick up a ball. Okay, whenever you pick up a ball, okay, whichever color that you pick up, every color is being taken one score okay this is one three five seven whatever okay perfect now this is where okay this is where the main thing comes into picture these conditions and what you have to do here is based on the direct and indirect is where i'm going to choose whether i'm going to pick up this set or not okay now when i start reading this okay one of them picked up different balls okay in uh, each one of them picked up different balls in each round except the last Okay. All right. This is an indirect data. Okay. Purple ball was picked up more times than green ball, but less times than, okay. Again, indirect data. Each ball was picked up at least once. Okay. Not like, uh, are picked up the ball, which was picked only in round two. Okay. Uh, so if you see, I mean, the more I'm reading, okay, uh, out of the eight pointers, I've already reached down to four pointers, okay, like that, okay. And I have not got any specific point. If you ask me, P picked up a yellow ball in round two. Now, this is a direct data, okay. This is a direct data. So if you see here, okay, this set is on a, on a either you can say moderate or a difficult side, on a difficult side. Why? Because you have only one clear data coming up here. So in the initial time, okay, I'm not going to invest my first 12 minutes. Okay. Into this. That's why, okay. I am, I have, I have made up my mind in like, you no know, 40, 50 seconds of time. This is not the set that I have to attempt the first set. Let me look at more sets. So that's why I move on here. Okay. I have to go on to the next sets. Okay. Now this is the next set. Okay. Let's read this again. One minute time maximum that we have to invest in this. Okay. Let us see in this. Okay. Now in PBR, there are four movies. Perfect. Each uh, running each day, we have four shows. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four shows are there. Actual cost of ticket is rupees 10 per movie. Okay. But for each show, the ticket cost for one of the movies is only rupees 50. Okay. Now, uh, this is still now, okay. Again, a very similar kind of case that we have seen before. Okay. There are four movies. Okay. Four shows. Okay. Typically, uh, cost of the ticket is given to you, which is hundred rupees, but for each show ticket cost for one of the movies is 50. So understand what is happening. Okay. If I have to quickly make a quick table in my mind, okay, because that's another thing where you have to plot, right? You're supposed to plot the data. So what happens? Okay. There is movie number. Okay. Or rather what I can say is, uh, you have what like you no know, first show second show third show and fourth show okay these are the different shows okay in every show there's going to be you know these four movies okay that's going to be the data for me right movie number one two three four okay so typically that's the table that i already made up in my mind okay now if you want to tell me okay if you want to figure out the cost okay we know that actual cost of ticket is 100 okay but for each show the cost of ticket for one of the movies Okay, for one of the movies is rupees 50. Okay, so that means vertically, if I see, because this is show, right? This is the first show, this is the second show. Okay, let me put it here. This is show that I have put up. Okay, and in the grid is where I'm going to put the movies. Okay, what happens? Okay, here when I'm trying to look at things, but no movie will have a ticket price. Okay, more than this thing. In short, one of the values is definitely going to be 50. Okay, it is very clearly shown that but for each show, the 
ticket cost for one of the movies is rupees 50 okay perfect now if i go down here and start looking at the clues because end of the day this is the clue again right these are the clues that i have to see okay look at the clues here uh, first clue says in the first two shows okay uh, b went to m1 okay and m3 but not necessarily in the same order okay in the first two shows okay in the first two shows now there are because there are five friends okay this is also a parameter okay these are five friends okay now uh, b went to m1 and m3 okay now i'm not very clearly still getting but i'm getting two possibilities okay but in the first two shows this is one two okay m1 m2 can happen b can go but here if you see second clue a went to m4 for first show now this is a direct clue right okay so what happens here so if I put, let's say, this is A, B, C, D like this. These are the friends. Okay. And I'm going to put the movies in the grid. So what happens? A went to M4. So A went to M4 in first show. Okay. So this is very clearly given to me. B, D, E together went to M1 for, uh, for third show. So third show, B is going for M1. D is going for M1. Okay. And E is also there. Okay. One more friend is there. E is also going for M1. Now, this is a direct data. So this is a direct info. Okay. Similarly, if you quickly, quickly scan through, read it, fatafat, fatafat. Okay, you will see. Okay, A, B, C, E. Okay, watched M three on sh on second show. A, B, D, E watched M two on fourth show. Okay. Now this, if I'm just putting it, okay, that is also making okay giving me a lot of uh, information here. Okay. So if I just have to uh, put for second show okay it is m3 for a okay for b also it is m3 for c also it is m3 okay and for e also it is m3 so for second show i have information for four okay only d i don't know okay now a b d e again if you see a b d e okay is going to be m2 for fourth show okay this is four show a b okay that we see d is also we know which is m2 okay and e is what we know m2 great if you see, this is also direct. This is also direct. Okay. So I have still not gotten into one, two, three, four clues. Okay. Are still remaining. Few five clues are still remaining. So without out of the eight clues, okay, five clues are still remaining. Okay. And with three clues, if you see this much of my table is already full. Okay. So I am not typically going to plot the entire table in that one minute understand i'm not going to plot the entire table this is where to explain you i'm telling you but if you read okay you make sense okay i know a lot of things okay because one two three four information i'm getting from here four information i'm getting from here eight information okay and from here also if you see i'm getting four information so typically 16 shows okay i have already put up what are the total number of shows total number of shows okay that you see here okay was what like one two three four five okay five friends are there five fours are 20 okay because everyone is having 20 uh this thing here so if you see here okay typically one two three four five six seven eight only eight slots are left okay only eight slots are left okay out of 20 okay 12 is what you have to directly draw now this itself makes my set okay you can say either easy level okay or a moderate level whatever you feel okay but this is not definitely definitely a difficult level set than the set that we saw before okay so this this is one of those sets that you should be attempting okay but is this going to be my first set to attempt i'm not sure on that okay because i still have more four sets to be seen okay but this is a a moderate or an easy level set Understand, guys, this kind of set, if you ask me on the D day, if you get definitely people who are going to get a 99 percentile, 93 per, 98 percentile are definitely going to make this set 100 percent um, uh, correct. OK, everyone, people who feel that this set is yes, sir, this is an easy to moderate level set. OK, you guys can put a yes to it. OK, and and again, what I'm saying in that. So right now in your mock, you would be in the second minute slot. OK, uh, second, uh, there's the second minute is where you are reading and you are identifying the direct clues. OK, the more direct clue and you see, oh, yeah, this is still easy. So do not go on the length. OK, do not go on, uh, no, on, on the on the amount of data directly. OK, you should you should your job is to one minute quick scanning. OK, understanding the uh, number of direct sets and indirect sets. And that's where you pick up the sets. Perfect. So in my analysis, OK, sorry, in my in my uh, mock, what I would do is plot like sec, uh, first first set. OK, this is going to be 
like they are difficult set for me second set is i would say easy or moderate something like this okay is what i would put up okay great moving moving ahead okay uh, to the next okay now this is the third uh, this thing that we have okay let us have a quick read on this okay of what is this set all about okay uh, okay now what happens i tell you when someone sees this this kind of a graph by the way what kind of a graph is this this is a scatter plot okay this is a scatter plot in some of the cases they might give you a bubble over here okay uh, which is also called as a bubble graph okay bubble graph okay so it is one of the same thing be it you call it a scatter plot or a bubble graph one of the same thing okay uh, just a minute let me just quickly put on my charger okay all right so let's let's quickly uh, read through the set okay and figure out again in one minute time okay it's going to be it's going to be uh, you know easy moderate difficult what i'm going to do with this okay so what is said that okay mr x, x collected uh, information about the number of food critics okay who visited each of the 10 restaurants okay in the city during a particular year number of food critics okay basically food critics are people who go and give opinions about food okay all right further he also collected the data related to the number of food critics who ordered the restaurant special of each restaurant during that year okay ordered restaurant special ordered restaurant special okay that means when you go okay so someone goes there okay and orders the special items of that restaurant okay something like that people who order the special items okay during that year now these are the two information okay so that they have seen here percentage of food critics went to a restaurant and percentage of food critics who orders special let's say there's a uh, there's a restaurant where the special item is biryani let's say for that matter okay so how many food critics order biryani that is the percentage okay all right going ahead um, the following scatter graph okay presents uh, for that year the number of food critics who visited each restaurant as a percentage of the total number of food critics who visited the restaurant in the city and the number of food critics who ordered the restaurant special okay now this is where you have to be clear with what they are exactly telling okay uh, it is just okay from here onwards okay from here onwards if you see this okay they have used what what they have tried to do and this is a typical typical kind of set okay what they have tried to do here is they have tried to use they have tried to confuse you with the statements okay but for people i'm telling you okay for people who have good practice on sets okay definitely they will not find this kind of statement very confusing but because it's a first mark okay read very critically and uh, you know particularly here okay the number of food critics who visited each restaurant okay that is a num this is one data as a percentage as a percentage of the total number of food critics who visited the restaurants in the city what does it mean okay that means this percentage for example restaurant number 1 okay restaurant number 1 shows 10 here that means if there are 100 people there are 100 people 100 uh, food critics who went to a restaurant out of which 10% went to r1 that's what it means okay percentage of food critics went to a restaurant okay for r6 okay if whatever the number okay 25% of food critics visited r6 all right that's what your x axis data is giving me okay and that's what it is giving me here and then the, then the second part and the number of food critics who ordered the restaurant special of a restaurant as a percentage of the total number of food critics who visited that restaurant what does it mean again okay let's say this r1 is there okay r1 total number of people going is 100 out of which 10 people are going to r1 okay that means you no know, 10% which is there 10 people going now out of these 10 people okay that you see 15 percentage okay of people are ordering the special item okay are you guys clear with me okay are you guys with me understanding what the what the set is talking about okay whatever is the total number of food critics 10% of them are going to r1 okay and people who are coming to the restaurant okay 15% of them are ordering the special item everyone okay and that's what they have told here so it's not a very confusing thing okay just just that they have tried to use a lot of words to explain you and that's why it might seem confusing but it is not that confusing okay so very simple case just taking a random number okay there are 100 people overall 10 people are going to uh, going to let's say uh, no restaurant one out of which 15% okay of 
10, okay, which is going to be, let's say, 1.5. So 1.5 people are ordering the special item. That's what it is there. Okay. So if you see the data which is given to you is not very confusing here. Okay. The data is not very confusing. Now, by any chance, if you guys are thinking right now that, sir, how are you able to, uh, how will we be able to figure out in that one minute, okay, that you no, know, this should be the set that I should attempt or not attempt. Okay. This is going to be pure practice. Okay. This is going to be pure practice. Okay. And a, and a very simple and live example I'm showing you here is that look at this, look at this. Okay, this kind of statement, this three line statement, if you have practice, you will read this kind of statement once, understand it and go ahead and attend, go ahead with the solution. But if you have not practiced a lot of set, you might reread, reread and reread. And that's where you're losing on time. Okay, that's where you're losing on time. Okay, so perfect. This is where you need to understand, okay, uh, that the data given is not very confusing. Okay, and I think that's the only data, right? I mean, apart from that, if you see for which of the following pair of restaurants is the number of food critics who ordered the restaurant specials equal? But they have given you combinations. Your job is only to figure out, okay, whether these R5 and R4 is equal or not. Okay, how you how do you figure out these values? These values don't I don't think you would even need calculator, okay, or you know, doing a lot of calculations here. Okay, R5 is this, right? R5, how many people are going? 20 people are going. Okay, 20 people, and this is what 65%. Okay, not uh, sorry, not 20 people, 20%. Okay, so what happens? What is this number? Okay, you are doing nothing but 20% of 65%. Okay, something like this. So if what you can do here is you can take the overall figure as let's say uh from well, let's say you can take 100 okay and that of that you are taking this number okay clear so just you just have to make a comparison of this 20 percent of 65 okay that is going to be what 13 okay what do you get okay for I, r5 okay similarly r4 if you see r4 is 15 okay and this is 75 that means 15 percentage of 75 how much is that going to be that's going to be roughly around 11.25 okay Perfect. So you know between these two, this is not equal. Similarly, you do a R, you know, R7 and R9. Okay. So this, what do you understand is this is the easy set. The reason why I'm making this easy set is because the data is very directly given to me here. Okay. I don't know the total number. Total number can be taken as 100 because it is all percentage percentage. Okay. And you know here that every, every information that we have, okay, is directly, okay, this into this, this into this is going to give me that. Perfect. Isn't that an easier set, guys? Okay. Tell me, tell me a quick yes or no. Okay. So that I understand that my, no, my audience is there with me. Okay. Isn't this an easier set? Okay. Isn't this set uh, not giving you a lot of confusing data? So very simple data out there. Okay. But I'll tell you what happens here. Okay. A lot of people, a lot of people looking at this graph, they will run away. Okay. A lot of people are going to do that. Okay. Oh, this is some graph and I'm not good with graphs. Okay. All those kind of okay, uh, preconceived notions are there in their mind. Okay. And they would directly skip on these kind of questions. Okay. So that is where the, the trap is. Okay. Some questions are made learn you know, the difficult looking kind of sets, but they are actually easy. People must have seen this. Okay. In fact, if you want to look at more questions, okay, look at this. Okay. What is the average number of restaurants special that each food critic ordered during the year? Okay. So this is the average number of restaurant specials. Okay. That means nothing but your, this is a little calculation, but the calculation is not very heavy. Okay. Yes. Here they, the options are very close, especially these three. Okay. I mean, I don't think this is going to be the answer. Okay. The answer might be between these three only, okay. but the answer are very close. What you can do in this kind of case, in this question, you can use calculator. Okay. Uh, because this is simple calculations. Okay. But a lot of calculations. Okay. So you can use calculator in these kind of cases. So understand you should be clear that where to use calculator. You can use calculator here because end of the day, your job is let's say, okay, uh, this is going to be 10% uh, into 15%. Okay. <clears throat> that you have to do. Okay. So 10% of 15% is what you have to do here. Okay. So this is going to become as one point. Okay. Something. Okay. One five like this. Okay, so uh, similarly, you have to do for all the things and then take an average of that. Okay, that's going to be this. So this is going to be a little time consuming, but if you use calculator, you'll be able to do this. Okay, uh, restaurant specials for which restaurant were ordered by the third lowest of the food critics. Now for this, if I use the data smartly, okay, I have firstly, I have four options in front of me. 
However, I know the lowest is going to be what? Like if you see, it is going to be there. No R one can be a possible case. Okay. Uh, if you so you don't have R ten. Okay. R six is there. R three is there, and R two is there. Okay. Uh, in this case, okay, if you want to have a comparison, okay, this number that you see, okay, because what happens, the higher this is there, okay, we can have this thing, twenty five percentage of thirty percent, okay, this is going to be ten percentage of fifteen percent, okay, this is going to be fifteen percentage of forty five percent, okay, and this is going to be, uh, this is going to be what, ten percentage of fifty five percent. From this, it is very much okay, easily becoming because you see R two, R one, okay, is very small, ten percent, okay. So, so there definitely, okay, the answer is going to be somewhere, okay, where you have to just figure out which is the third lowest, okay. They are not actually asking you for the lowest, lowest. Okay, we are very clear, lowest might be you know R one only, okay. So you can have a quick comparison of these four values, get the answer. Again, not a very difficult uh, question. Okay, so overall, okay, this is not a very difficult set to be attempted. Okay, and I would mark this set. Okay, let's say this this is the third set. I would mark this as an easier set. Okay, the second set, okay, was a easy to moderate. Okay, like easy to moderate that I was marking it. Okay, uh, but this is definitely easy. So for me, if I have to attempt any set first, this should have been my first set to attempt. Now people who have Just because of graph, they uh, they skipped it. Okay, they are at loss. Okay, someone who thought that okay, DI is something that I don't want to do. Okay, they are at loss. Okay, so don't make any preconceived notion. Okay, this is a, a mock where the DI is on an easier side. Okay, there can be a mock where the DI is on a difficult side and some other side might be easy. So don't go with preconceived notions in any of the mock guys. Okay. Perfect. Going ahead. Okay, this is the next set. Okay, which is a games tournament uh, set, which is there. Okay. Uh, again, if you see here. Okay, let me just quickly. All right. Let me have a quick check. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So this is a T Twenty World Cup. Okay. India played uh, exactly one match with each of the New Zealand. Okay. Perfect. Okay. These are given. Pakistan also played exactly one match with each of these four teams. So basically, India is playing against four teams. Okay. India. Pakistan is also playing against four teams. Okay. So total of eight matches are there. Okay. Four uh, were day matches and four were day and night matches. Okay. Basic information given to you in the initial part. Each day from Monday to Thursday, two matches were played. Okay. One day, uh, one day match and other day and night match. All right. It is also known. so. These are so the initial part is is like basic information. Not a very tricky in the initial part. Okay. What you have understood is every day, say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, these are the four days. Okay, and uh, every day you have you no, know, you have two kind of matches. One is the day match. One is the day and night match. Okay, so this is the case. Okay, and your job is now to only put up which day which match is there. Okay, or rather which day which match is a day match and which match is a day and night match. Okay, that's what is your job now. Okay, uh, now I'm going to look at these clues, and based on the clues, I'm going to take a call whether okay this set is uh, easy, moderate, and difficult. Okay, everyone. All right. So going here. Okay. Uh, is the pen. Okay. So India versus England uh, and Pakistan versus South Africa did not hold on same day. All right. So this is not a direct clue or indirect clue. Okay. India. Sorry. The New Zealand and South Africa did not play a match on the same day. Again. uh indirect clue okay that you have but what you understand is okay there is these are some sets where they they give you a lot of negative clues okay all right so this is a no thing this is a no thing okay india and pakistan both played two day two day matches and two day and night matches okay so basically because india is going to have four matches pakistan is going to have four matches so two matches are here two matches are you know, uh, like this okay uh, day and night so uh, this is sure of okay so what what i will do is okay i know That now my further case the whether neither India nor Pakistan played two consecutive okay again not this thing Pakistan versus uh, England uh, match was a day and night match okay this is a direct clue okay great this is a direct clue India versus South Africa match was on a day match on Wednesday now this is also direct clue India versus South Africa was a day match on Wednesday so India and South Africa. Okay, India and South Africa is a day match on Wednesday. Is that you see? Okay, uh, England is the only team which played on consecutive days. Okay, now England is going to have a match every day. Okay, that you see here. Okay, that is also the case. Okay, uh, again, 
okay from the perspective of a easy set okay the first set because i told you the first set okay is this a set easier than the previous set set tell me yes or no is this a easier set okay than the first set i mean the next uh, the previous set okay which we saw which was about that scatter plot is this a easier set than that for me no because if you see okay it's not having a lot of uh, direct clues okay is not having a lot of direct clues in fact what i am doing a quick comparison in my mind is i'm checking this okay with regards to the uh, one more set that we did which is uh, the movie set okay the movie and show okay the movie show thing okay that was also having a lot of direct clues so for me this would be set number 3 as of now okay first set is the is the scatter plot one okay uh, this okay second is going to be probably that movie one okay and third probably okay at this point of time okay this is going to be at a moderate or a tough level for me like this so uh, easier than the no sir okay easier than the first set okay yeah easier than the the, the first set that we did but right now what i'm saying is uh, anand okay, in terms of attempt okay so right now scatter plot would be the easier till now okay and uh, the movie show thing okay was also not a very difficult one that would have taken as a second set all right coming down okay with the we're coming down with the next set okay so i think uh, how many sets are more left okay i think we have two more sets left okay uh, so this is done okay now here okay if we see six professors are there okay went to university to deliver six uh, different lectures on a particular day each professor reached the university at a different time and delivered the lecture which started at a different time okay so two things one each professor reached okay what is the reach thing at a different time okay and delivered the lecture okay which started at a different time the following information is known about the order in which they reached the university and the order in which they started the lectures okay now understand from here that means you have two orders to be done one is start okay one is the reach when did the professor reach the class okay and second is when did he start the class these are two two data that you have to plot all right these are the two different data that you have to plot okay perfect going ahead with the things by the time martin reached the university okay melissa has started delivering the lecture and jason was at the university okay uh, you can make sense here okay uh, on one thing that when martin martin reached okay i think just uh, okay so when martin reached the university okay melissa started delivering the lecture okay and jason was at the university that means when martin is reaching before that melissa okay and jason are already there okay one thing that we understand from here okay so you can make note of it okay martin when he is reaching okay before that uh, melissa okay and jason are already there okay like this you can have this and so you have two plots okay that's why okay the delivering part is also where you understand that before martin's class okay melissa is already started delivering so melissa is before martin in terms of the delivery so what you can do is i can put a number here okay there are six professors 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay you can do something like this so uh, first data is shela kind of a direct data Meli merlin was not the last person to reach okay but he reached after jason and started delivering the lecture okay again not a very clear data when josh reached okay at least two professors okay were at the university but josh delivered his lecture again if you see okay not very clearly okay uh, like when i say clear no uh, direct data what would have been a direct data here okay that uh that let's say that mr x is the third person to reach okay or rather mr y is the third person to start a class okay so if you read all this thing okay none of the data are going to be a very clear cut okay and a direct data so right now okay i am not taking that not picking up because right now i'm when i'm reading this okay i would be in my 6th 7th or 6th minute of my set okay of my mock and this is where okay uh so the fourth one is a direct data <clears throat> Yes, but then not not very much. Okay, that's what I said. Only one direct data that you are getting. Ted was the third person to reach university, but was the first professor. This so this is only one data that we are having. Look at the other things. Okay, that means there are more of indirect data, and that's why this is not a set that I would prioritize before the scatter plot and before uh, you know the other other sets that we have seen. Okay, <clears throat> because what happens in your mock, you would definitely. you know when you see a particular set you analyze a particular set okay you invest that one minute time okay and you make a quick decision that yeah this is where it is easy 
okay so and when you read set after that you understand from your level only that this is not a set that which is easy so i would not pick up that set okay great um all right so now this uh, now this is where you have multiple graphs okay so you have score grades okay and graphs okay so 30 finalists uh, participated in the in the dance dikha ja okay which is a reality show the bar graph show gives the information about the average score okay obtained by part participants in each of the five rounds there are five rounds overall okay maximum score in each round is 90 the table gives information about the grades given on performance of the participants according to the scores okay all right so this is the grade sheet okay that this much marks okay this is the grade um every score you see here is round 1 round 5 okay here the every score is given to you okay perfect assume that none of the participants scores more than 70 and less than 10 and each participant score is a multiple of 10 perfect great okay uh now so here firstly you have the average okay and this is by the way i this is the reason why i say that average is an important concept of cons that you should be clear with which is the di set that we are looking at okay now till now um in terms of the data which is comes okay look at the question the question is asking the maximum number of participants who could have got a grade g in round 5 okay grade g what is g g is 10 Okay, now this is a a a no DI set where you are talking about right now of maximum minima, but I mean compare that again with the scatter plot graph in your mind. Okay, the pre the scatter plot question over there it was a direct information that we are getting. Okay, are we getting information here? Okay, with regards to the participant and the score directly? No. When it comes to round five, okay, there is going to be again combinations. Okay, we know that there is a overall average which is of fifty three. Okay, that means the total of what the total participants are thirty participants. Okay, so total of this okay would be fifty three into thirty, which is going to be the total. Okay, and then you have to do this for the maximum number of participants that could have got grade G in round five. So that means what you can do, okay, if you have to make a maximum number of participants, this that means you have to do the minimum number of people getting. Seventy, okay, because you what you have done. Assume that none of the participants score more than seventy. So the minimum number of people who get seventy is where you need to start again. Okay, so you do uh, all of this. Okay, is where you start off with this. Okay, that no seventy. Okay, like this from the total. Okay, you minus seventy. Okay, and based on that you figure out that what is the maximum number of people that would have got grade G, because after minusing that. Okay, after minusing that. Okay, after minusing seventy. Okay, is where you get minimum number. Okay, whatever the minimum number that you can pick up from there. Okay, let's say thirty people are there. Okay, you can take. Okay, let's say one person is seventy. Okay, if you pick up one person is seventy. Okay, so what you do minus. Okay, is you minus from the total seventy and then you divide. So one thing is very sure that the data is not very very you know clearly and simply given to you. Comparing that with the scatter plot. Coming to here, if you see what is the maximum number of participants that got grade A, what you would do to get uh, you know grade A is maximum. That means minimum number of people you would get ten points, okay, for round four. So here, one thing that you are understanding, the the data is not very complexly given, but yes, this involves more number of combinations okay to be done in terms of the minimum maximum thing. Here again, difference between maximum number of participants okay getting grade G okay uh, in round two and three okay all these questions that you see. My simple question okay that I am being emphasizing from the very beginning is I need to figure out that first set. Okay. So definitely, this is not the first set. Now, if someone is quick with number crunching, okay, he can pick up this probably as his second or third set, okay, but not as a first set for sure. Comparing that to the scatter plot graph, everyone gets right, okay. So the the basic idea, okay, from the analysis is what we wanted to achieve, okay, is this that yes, first seven minutes, eight minutes, okay. quickly going what do you have to identify direct sets indirect uh, direct data indirect data based on that pick up that one set okay uh, no that is going to be the easiest one where you can have a 100% accuracy okay pick up that set so people who have would have picked up that set as the right set okay would have at least got that one set right now come because this is your first mock okay there is a very high chance that yes this 7 8 minutes you must have you no know, you have spilled over and probably you must have done this in 10 minutes okay that that could have happened that is completely fine okay next thing is 
you if, if you have picked up the right turn the next mistake is what you would have picked up a wrong set at the first set okay that is what you need to learn okay that yeah this is what i've learned from this mock and this is what i have to improve further the next mock onwards work on this that at least have the first set as the correct set that you have got and in case that is not the case that means in your analysis you're going to go back in your analysis you're going to check this okay and figure out that whether the set that you have picked up was a right set or not okay that's what you have to do and that's what you have to analyze uh, even if you have picked up the scatter plot, which is the right set for you here, you might have taken more time. Let's say you must have taken 15 minutes. Okay. On that set. Okay. That's a total of around 25 minutes has gone with one set. Okay. And then you have moved, then you still have left. Okay. For around another 15 minutes of time, which is for the second set. So understand if the set selection is correct. Okay. You still can afford to give. 10 15 15 10 minutes for identifying the set number one and set number two and 15 15 minutes for both the sets and if you're getting that understand okay eight questions right if you're getting okay with 100 percent accuracy it's a good thing okay let's say even if you're getting seven questions right which is 21 marks if you're getting in this particular section it's a good position to be in because this is the first mock okay this is the first first mock Okay, that's why I hope you guys are clear with the approach. Okay, of you know the way you should have attempted this particular section. Okay, the way you should have uh, you know tried to solve. Okay, this particular section. Okay, uh, how you would have identified. Okay, great. Okay, good one, Anand. Okay, uh, scattered graph. Okay, was the easiest section. Okay, that I told you. Okay, that was the right thing. Okay, so make sure next mock analysis. Okay, whenever we have. Okay, by that time you at least bring in this change in your LRDI section. Okay, because LRDI is like a dynamite. Okay, uh, no, you have no time in hand to pick up. Like, no, I, I was seeing the the cons analysis also. Okay, and you see that there's there's individual questions. Okay, so there you still have scope to play around the question that you don't want to attempt or you attempt. But in this case, these are just six sets. You don't have a lot of questions. I mean, the total number of questions are going to be around 24, okay, that we have here, okay, but you can't go on in each and every question, right? You have to go six sets wise. So even if you, you know, goof up with one of the sets, okay, it's going to be really, really, you know, it's going to backfire you strongly. Because if, if you put, you have a wrong set selection, okay, let's say the two sets that you selected, both the sets are wrong, okay, understand what's going to happen. You will be around half an hour, okay, into the paper, okay, and none of the questions would have, you would have attempted, and that's where the frustration level goes up, okay. So set selection is the key, work on that, definitely that's going to help you improvise the overall score. Okay, great. Uh, with that note, okay, I think, okay, we have uh, Kamini ma'am already who has uh, joined in, okay. Uh, we will start off with the verbal section. Okay, I will. Uh, so, Kamini ma'am, are you able to uh, present the screen? Uh, yes, sir. I can share now. Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so put it on presentation. I think you guys uh, are done with your uh, quants part, LRDI part. Now let's talk about verbal. So basically, when we talk about verbal, uh, as compared to if I compare, you know, with the uh, LRDI and when I'll compare this to uh, quant section, verbal is not that tricky. Okay, because it is you need not to solve the entire question to understand whether I'm going to get it or not. Okay, so with one single glance, you can just able to identify that whether this question is worth attempting or not. Okay, so you will have 50, uh, 40 minutes with you in last examination in uh, previous year, we had around, uh, you know, 40 minutes. So the question arises that how am I supposed to solve so many RCs and so many questions because uh, the number of questions are around 24. Okay, but now the question is that there are so many RCs. There are around four RCs. So how am I supposed to solve these four RCs also? I have to read them. I have to comprehend them. There might be some RCs which are very difficult to understand and they might consume a lot of time. Okay, so there are many questions related to this. So uh, first about RCs and now Parasimple, again, a very time consuming uh, question. And if we talk about this particular mock, we are having RCs, uh, summary questions, parasimple and out of context. So four types of question and out of those four types of question, two are absolutely time consuming. So how am I supposed to go with this mock? Okay, so there are various questions. 
so let me first start with the proper strategy before starting that how to solve a question paper how to solve a mock in a limited time the bigger question is that what what are basically your strategies related to every type of question what is your strategy of solving rc instead of first before opting that whether i should solve it or not you should know that what is the proper strategy so uh, before starting mock what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to first discuss that what should be your strategies of solving different type of questions okay so uh, there might be around 2 to 3 strategies for every single thing now which one is uh, appropriate for you that is something you have to decide okay because it might be possible that for some student one strategy is uh, one strategy work and for some other any other strategy let's take an example first start with rc because rc like there are four rcs and almost covering around 20 questions okay so let's talk about rc first so uh, basically whenever i talk about rc i come across two types of students one says that you know ma'am first if we read questions first so after that if we read passage we get distracted why because we keep looking for the answer so we actually uh, fails to get the crux we actually fails to comprehend the passage in a correct manner and we might uh, mess up with the question okay so one time second some feel that if we read first passage now it becomes difficult for us and uh, we consume a lot of time while solving the questions but when we solve question when we read questions for reading comprehension becomes easier because then we know that okay on what paragraph on what point we need to pay attention on so i would recommend if you are opting for any of the third strategy please don't opt it okay that might uh, be working for you but that might not work on every single passage okay so things are a little dicey if you feel that okay things are working for me that i might you know uh, get my answers correct no don't do this okay there are only two strategies of rc solve it i mean uh, three to four rcs are enough to tell you that which strategy is actually working for you okay this is about rc next let's come to vocabulary questions you might come across the vocabulary questions too my advice do not waste much time on vocabulary question please don't read it once that's it maximum twice don't go for reading those questions thrice because vocabulary question you know the answer or you don't know the answer there is no in between that okay let's think a little we might come across the uh, answer let's think a little we might uh, remember the word you don't know the meaning so how am i supposed to uh, you know come how you will supposed to come with the meaning either you know the root word that okay i have some idea that this particular ego stands for i so this this has to do something with this no so don't waste much time on vocabulary question okay third thing summary question summary is something i would say that easier questions because see summary mein you have to just keep certain things in your mind that which read the entire passage passage relatively chota hota hai so you need not to worry about it that it gonna be time consuming okay so read the passage identify what passage is talking about and look for the appropriate answer now how to look for the appropriate answer answer is this obviously we have to look for appropriate answer but how so there is one method summary means you have when i read that particular sentence which you have opted as your answer i should get somehow similar idea of that passage only i'm not aware of the passage what passage is talking i just read your summary okay so what will happen in this case what you have to do is just read the passage you will get the same idea and i'm also getting the same idea okay this is the one technique now again a little difficult there is one more trick which will definitely work for you okay maximum questions mein ye trick work kar jati hai whenever you are reading a passage now keep writing key point or obviously passage is around maximum five lines or six lines theek hai usse bada passage to hoga nahi so what you can do is six lines are there six sentences will be there so obviously six sentences mein i maximum information i can introduce you to six write those key elements and now see which sentence which option is covering the maximum points okay if there is an option which is talking absolutely opposite to what our passage is saying eliminate it if you see that there are two options and both are covering key elements compare that which one is covering more elements because not possible ki pura ka pura passage copy uh, copy paste ho jaye 
Okay, so this is something you can go for summary. Okay, now uh, then we go for tricks and uh, tips. Paragraph jumbo ke liye, there is only one thing that is you have to go for the technique that we'll see. So paragraph jumbo is something we will solve in this particular uh, mock test. Okay, so first, first thing you have to do is just go through the questions you're having. Okay, now uh, I'll just show you how many questions we are having here. So one thing I can see in this particular passage is that this is little lengthy. Number of questions covering five. Okay, so number of questions covering five. Length is decent. I can dedicate my time to this particular passage on the basis of number of questions and length of the passage. Okay, if number of questions, suppose there are only two number of questions and the passage is absolutely lengthy, do not waste your time. You better come to it later on when you solve your entire uh, section, when you are done with, your, done with your entire section, then you can come back to this passage, otherwise skip it. But here I'm having five questions and passage is decent. I won't say that it is a very really short passage, but yeah, relatively it is easier because it is also having five questions okay so first how to identify because it's not necessary key questions number of questions are more passage is not that lengthy so we will get all the answers first thing you have to do is evaluate the passage whether it is worth reading or not because every single student have their own strength areas some students are not very good with philosophical passages examination might offer you sometimes such uh, passages you know which are very philosophical and very confusing now what will happen if you'll keep reading those philosophical passage wo trap kar lenge. you'll keep dedicating time if you feel yaar, itna time to ho gaya, maybe i'm just losing one single point or ho jayega. so that will eventually waste a lot of time of yours eventually because wo ek gambling jaisa ho jayega ki yaar, to dedicate kar liya, let's two more minutes two more minutes this is and when you will leave your time you'll be in hurry Arya, it's time waste ho gaya, i have to cut my time okay so don't allow this so what we can do is we can do one thing that read the first just glance it don't dedicate much time huh? do not try to comprehend it just read the first passage and try to understand the structure and style of the passage is it way too complex if you feel it is complex and you didn't get it because if our introduction he nahi samaj aaya, first paragraph he nahi samaj aaya, so we can assume ki paragraph thora tricky ho sakta hai. Okay. Maximum when whenever you will be practicing, make sure that 30 seconds are maximum you should dedicate to first paragraph. 30 seconds mein pura paragraph samaj aa jata hai. That whether it is a trickier one or easier one. Theek hai? So read first paragraph. If you feel too tricky, if you feel the language is too complex, skip it. We have time with us. We can come back to this passage. Okay, despite having five questions, skip it. So if you read the first paragraph, the language, I would say a little tricky. So this passage can be a little tricky and can be a little time consuming. Though I can see certain words, which I can obviously see in the passage, but at first glance, I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna come to my next passage. Okay. Let's see the number of questions. One, two, three, four, five. Again, five questions. Now, length, not that bad. Let's see the uh, language. Whatever the spite and discretion of some men may, may, uh, may make uh, them say is access of their discontent, virtue and truth always regain their advantage. I have known women whose reputation was long unjustly damaged to restore themselves to the universal esteem of men by their consistency alone without any effort or artifice. Okay, so when I read this particular pa passage, paragraph, sorry, what I can see is that this paragraph is more like an opinionated paragraph. Whenever we talk about opinionated paragraph, opinionated paragraph are relatively easy to solve. Getting correct answer, chances are really high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this. Dedicate your time, fix your time that I'm going to dedicate this much time for solving this passage. If I talk about this specific passage and these five questions, around five or five to seven minutes are enough. Reading the entire and comprehension, five to seven minutes are enough. And when it comes to solving the questions, 
you can say that we can go around you know uh, four minutes four to five minutes enough so maximum time you should dedicate to this particular passage maximum i'm talking about maximum time okay that will be 10 minutes okay now proceeding further we'll solve the questions obviously but here we are just having ki kaun sa solve karna hai aur kaun sa solve nahi karna hai clear now see this one this one is pretty interesting fourth one length number of questions tricky now here if you see such type of answers can you see here on second only third only fifth only first and second so these type of questions are little time consuming okay because at this time you actually get a little stuck so if you feel that passage is little trickier up see this particular passage this is again one passage which i recommend like first passage we skipped we decided that we'll come to it later on second passage we solved because uh, it was more opinionated third passage is again little tricky i'm going to skip it again okay now let's come to the this one if i see the questions i need not to read the entire passage at all mujhe zarurat hi nahi hai padhne ki so never ever waste your time in this but we going to solve it how if you pay attention on the questions there are only three questions of this particular passage but if you'll see they are entirely related to vocabulary what retrospect means pedagogy means and name the figure of speech that describes the phrase resembles a statue uh, of marble now if i know the meaning of retrospect theek hai so i can easily solve this mujhe jana hi nahi hai because they are not forming a kind of question they are not forming uh, that you need to infer something or you need to show author's opinion nothing they are simply asking the word meaning of the word okay now thoda sa agar if we'll work little bit on root so retro usually stand for old true retro stands for old so can i say old is something which is related to past i get my answer pedagogy if you know the meaning that's okay even if you don't know the meaning i would recommend go back to passage identify the word where pedagogy is written read that entire you know thoda sa us part ko padho you might get the meaning because it is easier to identify the meaning when the word is given in the context you easy easily find the meaning anyway the meaning is teaching practices okay so if you know the meaning good and well and these are the kind of words which are easily i mean we actually use these kinds of words in our daily language okay now let's talk about third question third question solve only if you know every single meaning of these figures of speech i hope you guys have figure uh, you are aware of figure the figures of speech that is metaphor simile onomatopoeia these are the words these are figures of speech if you know the meaning of all these four options then only go for this question otherwise skip it do not waste your time on this question okay if you feel that yes i know the meaning of four uh, these four uh, figures of speech go back to passage though we can easily identify resembles a statue so we are talking about that something similar to something resemble karta hai something resembles to something it means we are showing the similarity so let's not take the risk though we can have an idea that okay simile can be the meaning but still go back to passage identify where it is written and solve it you will easily get that okay kis figure of speech mein baat ho rahi hai on of on of here definitely nahi ho sakta it stands for uh, uh, those words jinko humne sound karna like dishum dishum is not a word basically it's a sound so we have written that sound in the form of word that is on of on of here okay so <clears throat> there are certain things which you can actually refer <coughs> excuse me okay um so uh, here i know that on one of ps stands for those word hyperbole means uh, whenever we you know hyper it actually stands for when we exaggerate something a lot so it means exaggerated statement okay alliteration uh, it means uh, when uh, the occurrence of same letter or sound okay this is again not the case simile comparison when we show that something is similar to something else okay so if you know the meaning of all similes go for this question otherwise skip it don't waste your time passage padhne ka bhi zarurat nahi hai because even though if i understand what uh, basically resembles a statue 
ऑफ मार्बल मीन्स आई वोट बी एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई बिकॉज मुझे पता ही नहीं है कि फिगर्स ऑफ स्पीच है क्या एंड वॉट एवरी वर्ड स्टैंड फॉर ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर पैराग्राफ ओके सो दिस पैराग्राफ इज समथिंग विच इज वर्थ अटेम्प्टिंग ओके सो इवन दो हैविंग ओनली थ्री क्वेश्चन बट चांसेस ऑफ एक्यूरेसी आर रियली रियली हाई इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ओके सो दिस इज समथिंग यू हैव टू अटेम्प्ट नाउ लेट्स प्रोसीड फॉर फर्दर Now, if I'll see further, let's uh, let me just show you the all the questions. There are around uh, only six questions. Okay, so if we see the questions, this talks about summaries worth attempting. This talks about summaries again worth. This talks about summary again. Obviously, I'm going to attempt it. Paragraph symbol, paragraph symbol, paragraph symbol. This is I have to identify the odd one. Now this can be a little time consuming. Again, paragraph odd one out. Okay, so let's go back to questions and solve it. Okay, so till here we have solved two passages. I mean we haven't really solved not literally, but but uh, see from the mock point of view, skipped first, trickier, attempted second because the language was easy and number of questions were five, so worth attempting. Relatively, it was. A worth attempting passage. Third, again we skipped passage. Why? Reason? Because again that was a trickier one. I cannot waste my time. Obviously, we'll go back to that questions. But first, I'm going to focus on those questions on which uh, I can dedicate time and I can actually score. Okay. Fourth, we attempted that was the easiest one which we can get. Now let's talk about this particular passage. These are the uh, questions. Length decent, not at all that huge. कि हमें पूरा passage पढ़ना है and we have to come up with. Now let's solve the question. The mind has no independence substantially when we actually analyze it into its core. It is not an individual substance like a fabric or a cloth. As cloth is made of thread, the mind is made of impressions. It is a series of impressions that have been formed through ages. We may say of which at present we have no knowledge. For various reasons, millions and millions of perceptions have been responsible for the creation of this composite structure we call the psychological organ, which have an infinity reservoir of possibilities of perception, and this infinity reservoir of force within us is what we call the mind. So basically, I got the idea. Language is not that difficult. We are talking about that how. Our brain is storing the information and form, and our brain becomes that psychological organ. Okay, memory by memory, one by one, we are having our own perception, and we are just picking those, just like clothes, a thread by thread. So we are forming this with impressions. When we were child, we had no such impressions on our brain. As we age, as we grow up, we have our own experiences. Okay, so this is what passage is talking about. Now let's see the options. first says a uh, mind is monolithic and limitless entity okay but if we pay attention author says that it is not an indivisible substance okay it means it is not limitless <coughs> it is not an indivisible it means it is divisible so it means for limitless to nahi hai okay so this is definitely cannot be our answer why because absolute contradict to the passage second one says uh the limitless potential to store impressions and form perception is what constitutes might okay second true the uh, we are actually talking about the limit uh, less potential to store impression okay this is not a limitless entity but we have that potential of storing the impressions ओके इज इट लाइक दैट मोबाइल के जैसे होता है मेमोरी फुल डिलीट सम मेमोरीज नो राइट वी कीप स्टोरिंग इंप्रेशन एंड आवर परसेप्शन ओके एंड दो इंप्रेशन दे बेसिकली कॉन्स्टिट्यूट अ माइंड सो दिस इज वॉट आर पैसेज इज टॉकिंग अबाउट सो लेट्स कीप दिस एज एन ऑप्शन थर्ड वन से इज दैट माइंड इज डिविजिबल कॉम्पोजिट स्ट्रक्चर मेड अप ऑफ Optim impressions and perceptions. Okay, so this is what constitute mind. However, the idea of its limitlessness is not captured. 
okay so it is not talking about that how our brain is limitless and we can actually capture unlimited impression of ours memory store ka hamare paas mein message nahi aayega that uh, storage is full please delete certain apps no there is no delete button we wish there was but there is no okay so fourth one fourth one says that impressions and perception is what constitutes the wrap and wrap of the mind okay so fourth is uh, again true but however here again the main idea of mind being limitless because we are again and again passage is actually giving you know emphasis uh, on uh, that how our mind is limitless in capturing the impression its potential of keeping uh, its uh, potential of storing those impressions so that point is missing okay though this one is also true and this one is also true okay both are talking uh, what we are actually uh, talking in passage but if we compare second and fourth we see that second one is actually capturing the essence the crux because the passage is all about that how our brain is limitless uh, having that limitless potential of storing impressions and perceptions in the form of perception and that constitute mind okay so that's why we take second as our answer clear to everyone okay uh, if you guys have any question you guys can come up with it or else i'll start with the next one okay so second comes our answer now let's see the third uh, next one now uh excuse me 20th all our actions of our conscious life cannot be called deliberate or voluntary in the strictest sense of the term we are slaves of our own inner reservoir of perceptual possibilities and we appear to be exercising freedom of choice when this unconscious impulse comes to the surface of our consciousness we mistakenly think that we embark upon a conscious activity which assumes the role or form of a deliberate voluntary free exercise of will while really it was a stir that took place in the subconscious and unconscious layers of our personal uh, personality causing the conscious level to act as the rumbling of water at the bottom of the ocean may come up to the surface through a vibration and create a stir in the form of wave etc okay. so by looking at the option okay whenever we talk about summary question one single reading is basically enough because summary questions are not that tricky relatively examination offers easier question trickier one you may find in parasimple and passages reading comprehension okay let's see first one free and voluntary exercise of will is first never have never has an action being bereft of its subliminal prompting okay so first one i would say is not true all our action cannot be called okay we are talking about that all our action are not be called so basically this means that some can be as first so we cannot take first one as our answer not true second again ulterior motives play a major role in determining most of life's actions leaving only few actions to be conscious ones okay again not true motives need to be ulterior eliminated next says all actions are conscious are actually either subconscious or unconscious again all action cannot be said to be motivated by subconscious or non conscious okay we are only talking about that there are possibilities of sub either subconscious uh, we are not saying that they are divided only in two categories okay so just limiting our uh, consciousness to these two categories won't be justice to our passage action may be misconstrued uh, uh misconstrued as conscious even when they have deeper motivations within us okay the author sends this message when he says that we mistakenly think that we embark upon conscious activities so basically when author says this he meant this only which we have already mentioned in fourth one so we have easily eliminated first second and third and fourth becomes our answer okay. proceeding next again a summary question <coughs> excuse me 
Now, how do you gain control over the mind? Now, who are you? First of all, who wishes to control the mind and its impressions? Are you the same as the mind or are you different from the mind? If you are the same as the mind, it is very difficult question because the mind cannot control the mind. Okay. Are you then different from the mind? In that case, then what are you? Okay. So, uh, pretty good and interesting passage, uh, I would call it. So, basically, uh, it is seems a little confusing, but actually it is not. What we are trying to say that... How do you gain control over your mind? Okay, you want to control your mind. You, first of all, who wishes to control the mind, it means I want to control my mind. It means I might be different from my mind. Okay, but if I say I am mind, then how can I control myself? Because if I mind, how can I control myself? And then how am I trying to do this? So what is, the, what is your relationship with the mind? Questions. Now, once not being... Same as one's mind makes the letter somewhat easy to understand. Okay, this is not true because it is not said by the author that if one is not the same as one's mind, it would be easy to have control over mind, right? So this one cannot be the answer. Second said, understanding one's own self is the first step of gaining control over mind. Okay, so first step, we have clarify here. The first step is to clarify one's relationship with one's mind. Okay. Now, third says you need to be anything but the mind itself to better gain control of the mind. Okay, again, even if you are anything but your mind, okay, still you need to clarify your relationship with the mind to enable to have better control over. Because you need to see now that what kind of relationship my mind and I am sharing. Are we same or are we different? And if we are different, that what relationship we share? Then only we can see if someone is your enemy. First, you need to identify now. Then you will treat that person like an enemy and you will handle that person like an enemy, right? If you feel that, no, we are friends, then you will treat that person like friends and you will control that person like a friend, okay? So before controlling or before going for any action, first I need to identify that actually relationship kya hai. Then only I, I'll be able to take step, right? Now, fourth says, uh, uh, to better control mind and understanding of the self in context of the mind is needed. Okay, so that is again understanding of the self in context of the mind. It means what we are to that mind. It means again identifying the relationship. So this is the answer. Fourth one. Next, okay, paragraph symbol. Paragraph symbols can be a little tricky, sometimes, not every time, but maybe a little time consuming. So uh, if you're feeling that, you know, you may be dedicating a lot of time on paragraph symbol, no, they might take a decent time, relatively more time than summary. Okay, so um, ideally, I tell you first uh, certain things about paragraph symbol and which you can see in question, might not be there in these questions, but there are certain things. First, pronouns. He, she, they, it. Identify them. How many pronouns are there? If you see any pronoun, see. Is there any noun given for them? If yes, identify that. Mera pair as Because first, if noun and pronoun both are given for the same person. Suppose I'm talking about a girl. Uh, girl name is Priya. A Priya, I have introduced Priya that she is Priya, she is so and so and so. And then I say she is a very good girl. So I know noun and pronoun both are given. So the sentence containing noun will come first. And later one will be with pronoun. If there is no noun given at that time, I need not to pay attention on the noun. Sorry, pronoun noun is not given. So don't pay attention on pronouns. Because at that time, pronoun will be of no help. We'll treat them like a person only. Second hint, there are many hints like but. But brings contradiction. Uh, Priya is a good girl, but. Now what comes in your mind? That I'm about to say something bad about her. Because it comes with contradiction. So whenever but is given, read that sentence. Ki but actually, but apne saath mein kaun sa sentence. What information but has brought with it? Okay. Is it negative? Is it positive? Is it talking about a certain point? Okay. And see that which sentence is talking absolutely contrary to that particular information. That is the sentence which will, which will come immediately before the sentence which is containing but. Second thing, uh, 
additional words like to also as well these are these are all additional words so whenever you see such additional words that these additional words has their own role that own role is that they always bring additional information okay so if also is bringing um, you know there is a sentence and which also is there and that sentence is talking good about a uh, countryside okay or rural areas so then i have to look for a sentence that's in particular sentence which is talking again good about rural area okay so that will be a pair again because that sentence will come immediately before that because it is bringing the additional information so these are certain hints which you can actually see in parasimple okay many a times there will be plenty of hints in the parasimples okay because see whenever we talk about parasimple i understand what the person is talking i'm not that dumb okay no one is but then what is this uh, arranging them in a logical sequence these are the hints and there are certain structure that we need to follow which is supposed to be a, an ideal structure that is introduction body and conclusion next thing next ideal structure if i'm talking about object a first i i describe about object a i cannot do this i describe a little about object a then i switch to object b maine usko thoda sa describe kiya then i switch to again object a no if i'm talking about object a make sure that you complete its description one by one immediately after each other and then you start with the object b's description okay so don't break the fluency don't break that particular phenomena of carrying a b c d okay now let's see this particular question okay <laughs> now this particular question talks about that he ended with a uh, reminder that hong kong would always be in the hands of patriots he also said that uh, they should never contain anti chinese demands okay this way martin lee is decidedly not a patriot what a menacing definition of patriotism he said that the future hong kong government would be freely and universally selected okay so first thing here uh, we cannot pay attention much on pronoun why there is not a specific uh, noun is given even if we talk about this this way so this particular sentence is also containing a noun so if i'll say ki ha i should keep third sentence as my first sentence because it is containing noun that is martin lee but again martin lee wala sentence be containing a pronoun that is this okay so on the basis of pronouns i can definitely not decide my first sentence now i have to see that which one is basically introducing me to the main idea of the passage now instead of looking for the first answer now i'm going to look for pair okay so as we said he also said it means he has all he ne pehle bhi kuch bola hai okay so let's see where he is saying something he said is that he said sorry i'm so sorry uh ha he said this thing okay and he also said so can i say why and to makes a pair we don't know yet which is the first sentence but one thing we definitely know is sentence number 5 and sentence number 2 makes a pair reason here he said something similar information also said and as i told you also brings the similar nature information always okay now let's look for the another hint now third sentence talks about this he ke liye main identify nahi kar sakti let's see this way martin lee is decidedly not a patriot so i need to identify that which particular sentence is talking about that he is not a patriot okay so related to that i have two informations with me that is first and fourth now let's read both of them he ended with the reminder that hong kong would always be in the hands of patriot what a menacing definition of patriotism okay so i can totally relate first fourth and three because they are actually talking about patriotism okay so all i know is that first third and fourth will come together all i need to do is that i need to i know that it won't happen ki uh, first pehle aaya or second uh, sorry third or fifth baad mein aaya no this won't happen 
these three will come together first third and fourth all i need to decide it that what should be their sequence okay once i'll decide their sequence also i'll have two pairs so i basically divided the entire passage into par paragraphs okay all i need to do is deciding that which will come first now see he ended with the reminder that hong kong uh, now let's connect try to connect this with second he also said that they should never contain anti chinese remarks okay so there is no connection here so i need to decide third and fourth this way martin lee is decidedly not a patriot so can i say that <coughs> fourth will come first fourth and then third that we are telling here that what it was exclamation mark it means we this is a surprising factor for us so on the basis of this that is this your definition of patriotism so this way if this is your definition of patriotism so in this way martin lee is decidedly not a patriot so fourth and third makes a pair now let's see that where we can fit first with these two sentences okay he ended with a reminder that hong kong would always be in the hands of patriots patriots so i can easily put that here because here with third we have concluded that he is not a patriot so this one sounds more like a conclusion so i'm going to put both one here because fourth and third makes a pair i cannot break it i cannot put any sentence in between so now all i have to do is i have to decide whether fifth or first is the introductory sentence up okay, it's uh, read back he said that the future hong kong government would be freely and universally selected now he also said that uh, sorry he ended with a reminder that hong kong okay so this cannot be because this shows that he started with something and ended with something so my sequence becomes pi and sec i hope you guys are clear so this is how you can keep connecting dots and you can keep looking at the sentences like this yahan pe we had two hints that is this way also with the help of these two hints we almost solved the 70% of paragraph okay then other things depends on the context like we have patriotism here so that entirely depends on the uh, okay uh but how first before four okay first before four see first to fall um uh, nivedita fourth and third is a pair theek hai let's understand from this scratch fifth and second makes a pair on the basis of also now i'm left with first third and fourth and all three sentences are talking about patriotism theek hai so <coughs> we decided that fourth and third makes a pair because we draw here a conclusion we obviously decided something actually we showed a scenario that on what basis we are deciding that martin lee is not a patriot obviously true so this way we can say that what a menacing definition of patriotism it means we are bringing up with a surprising element that look how this uh, what did you ask okay okay so uh i'm still explaining i don't know you got the meaning of entire sentence or not so let's explain it let's finish with this okay so uh on the basis of what i am i deciding that this is a completely disaster definition of patriotism so if you are saying that this is the definition of patriotism then martin lee is ab absolutely opposite to that okay so on the basis of that i decide that he is not a patriot okay so that is why i put fourth before first this is the definition of your patriotism so on the basis of this i declare that he is not a patriot okay now let's talk about first up one thing i cannot separate these two sentences because they make a pair okay i cannot put any sentence in between okay pair is called that two sentences जिनको हम सेपरेट नहीं कर सकते ओके वी कैन नॉट सेपरेट टू दो टू सेंटेंसेस दो टू सेंटेंसेस विच विल कम टू गेदर डेफिनेटली रिमेनिंग सेंटेंसेस समवेयर उनके आगे पीछे एडजस्ट होंगे बट 
not in between. So now I have two pairs that is five and two and four and three. All I need to decide is that where will first fall. Okay. Now first he ended with the remain uh, reminder that Hong Kong would always be in the hands of patriots. Patriots. Okay. So we had a pair here too. Okay. So he said something. He also said, and he ended. What is that ended? That he actually he said something. He added something. मैंने एक statement pass किया, फिर मैंने दूसरा statement pass किया, and then I ended my speech with reminder by giving a reminder that Hong Kong would always be in the hands of patriots. Okay, so that's why we are putting first here because now it is justified with the second also, and it is also justified with that first, fourth, and third should come together, and it is also bringing the continuity to fifth and second. Understood, Nivedita? Please reply so that I'll get that you have understood uh, this entire passage. Okay, so I'm assuming that you got the answer. Let's go for the. Next one. Okay. Now there are four sentences given to us, but these, uh, but these may and very often do pass unnoticed for quite a long time by those who have uh, had no uh, scientific training. The natural sciences have been more neglected in this country in the last fifty years, and that is saying a good deal. All those who trade, excuse me. All those who trade on uh, ignorance and prejudices of the public are having a good time and often employ it in writing the most appealing rubbish in reference to the important subject of literature. Diminishing energy and power, decreasing endurances, slowing circulation, lessening blood color, uh, falling temperature, altered good uh, altered blood pressure, enlarging heart and liver are some of the most obvious signs that. With the physician is brought into contact to such cases. Okay, so we get an idea that we are talking about, um, you know, some uh, thing related to our body and neglecting the facts and nutrition. Okay, so if I talk about uh, the all these four sentences, what I can see is, excuse me, first, not justified. The natural science have been more neglected in this country in the last fifty years, and that it is saying a good deal. Okay, it doesn't sound more like an introductory sentence. All those who trade on ignorance and prejudice of the public are having a good time and often employ it in writing the most appealing. Okay, this is again not introducing us to the passage. If we read <clears throat> all those four sentences, we see that fourth one becomes the first sentence because it is actually talking about. That diminishing energy power, we are introducing to all health problems, and then we are uh, seeing that brought into contact in such cases. Okay, now let's see remaining sentences. But these may and very often do pass unnoticed for quite a long time for those who have had no scientific training. Okay, so here what we are talking about. But these may very often do pass unnoticed. So what is going unnoticed? There, in these two sentences, there is nothing we can say. So unnoticed, or I, we are actually explaining about uh, natural science and everything. What can go unnoticed, which is given in fourth one? So can I say that fourth and first makes a pair? So now I have my first sentence and my second sentence. Now all I need to see is second and third. The natural science have been more neglected in this country in the last fifty years, and that is saying a good deal. So, uh, can we say this second is again the continuation of this? Because here we are talking about that they are going unnoticed. Here we are talking about natural sciences, that is basically our body only. Okay. So let's see third one also again before deciding that whether it will be the continuation of the first one or not. All those who traded on ignorance and prejudice of the public are having a good time, and often employ it in writing in most appealing rubbish in reference to the important subject of nutrition. Okay, so third one sounds more like a conclusion, but instead of just jumping to the conclusion, we have one more deal because this isn't the continuation of second. So if I keep third after first, 
सो थिंग विल अगेन जो हमने देखा था दैट इफ या इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट ए ऑब्जेक्ट आई नीड टू फिनिश विद ए ऑब्जेक्ट आई कैन नॉट डू दिस ए के बारे में दो चीज बोल रही देन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वन देन वन सेंटेंस इज टॉकिंग अबाउट बी एंड देन अगेन ए नो सो दिस वन इज बेसिकली अगेन टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस हाउ वी आर इग्नोरिंग how the things are going unnoticed how we are neglecting the natural signs how we are neglecting these uh, natural signs of our our body okay so this clearly mentions that i need to put second here okay fourth anyway hamara first up so remaining will be a third without any second thought we can put it third clear to everyone any questions related to this <clears throat> okay so i'm hoping that you guys have no question let's proceed to next one okay <clears throat> again but in this uh, in this as in other signs when the truth has been reached it can generally be presented in a comparatively simple form and the main position can be justified even in the general reader by methods much less complicated and much more lucid than those originally followed by investigators themselves historical criticism is in comparatively modern science and its application to this as to other hist uh, histories is it has made many false and uncertain steps the process of uh, <clears throat> disentangling the and uh, the twisted skein of tradition is necessary a very delicate and complicated one and involves certain operations for which special scholarship is, is indispensable okay <coughs> the modern view has been reached by a mass of investigations and discussions of which no satisfactory general account has ever been laid before the english reader okay so pretty tricky one and little lengthy to understand that we can connect to the dots because uh, sentence mein apne aap mein bahut sare uh, paragraphs hai <clears throat> okay now first but uh, in this as a other signs doesn't justify it means humne aur koi signs mention karke rakha hai so first cannot be our first sentence second says uh, historical claim uh, criticism is a comparatively modern science and its application to this okay kis ko application we don't know the process of this entangling and twisted schemes of tradition is necessary a very delicate and complicated one and involves certain operations for which special scholarship is indispensable okay so uh, i don't have any reason to eliminate this one because this is not uh, not uh, you know leaving a question mark in my brain that i'm not getting answer of any of the both that it leave ki ha there i need some more information like i need ki ye this kis ko refer kar raha hai i need but in this other sciences so pehle kaun si science refer kar rahi hai okay so that's why <clears throat> this cannot be my first uh, sorry this i don't know <clears throat> i definitely cannot eliminate it but let's keep this as an option before that let's see the fourth one the modern view has been reached by a mass of investigation and discussion of which no satisfactory general account has been laid before the english reader okay so this one though i don't have a question <clears throat> sorry guys okay so i don't have a question but it again leaves a question mark that what am i talking about okay this doesn't gives me an introduction to the passage so what i'm left with third one so third becomes my first sentence now next is uh i have one link if you have seen that here we are talking about other signs theek hai ab maine signs ka kahan pe baat kiya hai there is any other signs it is there in here modern signs so historical criticism is comparatively modern signs and its application to this as to other histories it had made many false and uncertain steps but in this as in other signs when the truth has reached okay so i can connect easily these two on the basis of modern signs and other signs so one pair i comes up with second and first hmm. now i'm left with fourth all i need to decide is that whether this four will follow uh, this four will fall after three or it will fall in last okay 
Now, let's re, uh, read the fourth one and see whether we can connect this to third one or we can connect this to first one. The modern view has been reached. Okay, modern view. Introduction kaha diya modern view ka in second. So I cannot put this here. Immediate will be here. Kyuki yaha to aani sakta. It will be here. So this becomes my sequence. Okay. So this is how you need to work on hints in parallel construction so that you can save a lot of time of yours. Second way is again reading questions, uh, reading entire paragraph again and again, again and again, comprehensive entirely, pura usko translate kiya in there. But then again, it will be very time consuming. Okay. So that's why picking up the hints is the easiest way and most, and it's going to save a lot of time also. So we can dedicate this time to our questions which we have skipped. Okay. Five sentences related to a topic are given below. Four of them can be put together to form a meaningful and coherent short paragraph. Identify the odd one out. Okay. In this one, this is again a kind of paragraph simple only, but here we need not to arrange them in a uh, coherent passage in a logical sequence, but we need to identify that which sentence does not belong to the paragraph. Okay. So now there can be multiple ways. First reason is, again, I would say pronoun. Suppose they is given in a sentence and there is no mentioning of group of people. Now there is no group of people, so how am I supposed to take they? Mera they identity uh, justify nahi hoga? Eliminated. Uh, for example, but brings contradiction. I have a positive information, then a sentence with negative information. So I need but. So negative information ke so ja, sa jo hai, that is containing but. So for if I have to eliminate, you know, eliminate positive one. I cannot because then my but sentence and my negative information will waste. Okay, if I'll eliminate but, I cannot directly jump from positive to negative or negative to positive. If I eliminate negative one, my positive and but becomes uh, useless. Okay, what I'm what I'm, option I'm left with? I have to eliminate the fourth one. Okay, so make sure there are certain sentences which are dependent on each other. Okay, there might be certain things when I introduce kisi sentence mein kiya hai, and then I'm going for the further explanation. So I cannot keep explanation part and eliminate the introduction because that will bring a question mark. Okay, ki introduction ka hai iska. So there are multiple ways. Now, least one, that it's not related at all. I'm talking about politics or one sentence is talking about environment, which is absolutely not related. So that one. Okay, so let's see this one. Uh, to ask love to last indefinitely is to ask even more. It is no longer respectable as it once was to marry for anything but love. Indeed, the pursuit of love through family life has become for many the very purpose of life itself. Love has changed from a peripheral concern of the family into its primary justification. Love, however, is defined in terms of this notion of shared growth. <coughs> okay. So, um, let's try to connect. So, instead of forming a coherent paragraph, what you can do is, you can actually identify that which sentence are connecting. That's it. No need to arrange them in the logical sequence. So let's see. Uh, statement first is not related to the passage in some way, I can say. So I can keep this as an option. Now, second sentence, uh, basically introducing the concept of marriage. Okay, that uh, it's no longer respectable. It is uh, once was to marry for anything but love. Again, we are talking about love, that indeed the pursuit of love through family has become for many the uh, very purpose of life itself. Love has changed from a peripheral concern to the family. Again, these two are definitely related. Okay. Isko abhi mein kisi ke saath relate nahi kar pai. Isko bhi abhi mein kisi ke saath relate nahi kar pai. But when I, uh, somehow I can relate these two, but they are again different from each other. So third one and fourth one, I can easily relate. So obviously, in may se to koi eliminate nahi hoga. Fifth one, again, love, however, is uh, 
defined in terms of this notion of shared growth. Okay, what exactly shared growth is? Basically, I can relate this to family. True, love however is defined in terms of this notion of shared growth. That overall growth is there because we are talking here about family. So three, I can connect. Now, all I have to do is that whether first or second, which one connects more. So to ask love to last indefinitely is to ask even more. It is no longer respectable. So again, we are talking about marriage, family and everything in four sentence. Here also it is talking about marriage. But here we are talking about, you know, long lasting promises. They lived happily ever after, more like that. So I can say that first one can be out of context. Yes, because these four are related. We are talking about marriage. We are talking about some practical aspects. We are talking about the family. We are talking about the overall growth. Whereas first one is more talking about, you know, it is more like from romance point of view. Okay. So that's why first one will be our out of context or out one out. Okay. So uh, if you guys have any questions, you can come up with them. We'll solve it. We'll solve your all queries and whatever questions you are having in your mind. Related to verbal section, related to examination. Okay, so this is how a mock or a paper examination uh, paper looks like. So 40 minutes to this question, easily solvable. All you need to do is you need to adopt certain strategies. Pay attention on vocabulary questions. Don't waste much time. You know it or you don't know it. Okay, so a number of questions are there. Next is uh, solving those questions which are not very lengthy and not very tricky. If you see such question, solve it. Paragraph jumble mein, if you see a lot of very lengthy passage, it means, you know, there are around four lines in every single sentence. Make sure you skip it. Come to that particular sentence later because then it becomes difficult. Okay. So first thing you have to do is analyze the nature of the question. If question seems a little tricky, if question seems too lengthy and only see, you are solving entire slide. Okay, you are solving uh, almost a reading comprehension in the form of paragraph symbol. And marks you are getting only of one question. So that there is no point of giving so much time on a single question when you are only getting marks for one single answer. Okay. So evaluate like this and proceed. Ideally, if I talk about that, how many questions ideally you should solve in this particular um, sentence. Again, my question will remain same. Whatever we have skipped. That is first passage and third passage. Skipping those and solving entire uh, one is entire uh, question paper is enough. And it is solvable too. In 40 minutes, you can easily cover whatever we have solved so far. Okay. Instead, you can, uh, if you feel that your accuracy might be not that good. So in that case, you can also take around, you know, solve one passage and take around uh, three to four questions of that too. So ideally, skipping two questions and solving rest is enough to get you good marks in the examination. Okay. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's session and I don't see any query. So I hope you guys have no query and you got the entire session really well. So I'm calling it a day. If you feel like keep following and just keep gaining knowledge because mocks never, uh, mocks is something you need to practice. Mock is something that will actually show you the real scenario of examination. Okay. So I'm calling it a day. Bye guys. Take care and uh, practice well. Okay, Madhur, pleasure is all ours. We glad you enjoyed the session. Bye guys, take care and practice.